Okay, here we go. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Synth Geekery, episode number 244, I believe. Yep, that's what the screen says. We'll go with that. Uh, how <laughs> is everybody going this week? I hope you're all having an awesome time. I hope you guys got some music done during the week. Uh, if you didn't, slap. Give yourself a slap. Bad. You're bad. You need to be good. No, no just kidding. Um, we did talk about it last week, so uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, watch last week's show. But if you're wondering what the hell this show's about, it's about synthesizers, uh, samplers, like, you know, like the NPC or... Uh, an Octatrack or something like that. Uh, sequences like this thing here, like the Korg SQ64, that's a sequencer. What else is it about? It's about DAWs, digital audio workstations like Ableton Live and Cubase and Logic if you're an Apple person. Um, there's plenty of others. And it's about uh, drum machines, you know, like uh, the famous Roland TR-808 or maybe a more modern one like, uh, I don't know, Yamaha something or other <laughs> I just I didn't have that one ready um, okay yeah, yeah. welcome anyway uh, if you haven't been part of the show before please jump into the chat and say good day um, it is streaming live from Australia from the city of Perth which is one of the most remote cities in the world and I like to say that because I like you guys to have a sort of an idea what's going on but it's not just about us and about the Aussies it's about the rest of the world and, and music and synths and we want you guys to be part of that community so please join us now if you do want to actually join us even more you can jump on to zoom why did that button not work try again I know buttons working buttons not working no, no. Uh, zoom buttons not working I'm gonna to have to restart my MPC gremlins hey ah just midi Try now. There you go. Hey, hey. Try that link there. It's also uh, pinned in the chat if you're wondering. Join us on Zoom. Uh, I don't have anyone. I'm feeling a little bit lonely. Uh, there are people, by the way. You could probably hear them in the background. If they're not on Zoom. They're on uh, vMix call, but that's okay. Uh, I do have space up to 100 people to join us on Zoom. Um, I haven't had much success with Zoom so far. I'm wondering what's wrong with it. Does it have poo on it? Uh, has someone done the sniff test and not liked the smell? I'm not sure. Uh, I don't actually work at Zoom, so I don't really care. But it's free, and I'm kind of wondering, maybe it's, it's at the time of that. Tell us in chat why you can't come onto Zoom. Uh, are you busy? Are you in the car? What are you doing? Uh, we'd love to know. And even if you don't want to be on for like hours or you're in your PJs or you're in your undies, we don't care. You can just turn your camera off and we can just have your audio. So I've said that before. Do join us. Um, just like these people have here, they've all joined us. Uh, we've got Darren. Put your hand up, Darren. Yep, that's Darren there. Andy, put your hand up. Andy, where, where the hell are you, Andy? Are you in a church or something? I'm in the Paris Hotel in Vegas. Ah, I thought you were in somewhere different. In, there you in, go. in a fancy chair. Look at the fancy it is chair a fancy guy. chair. Yeah. Look at that. You look like... Uh, you the fancy carpets. The, carpet? The... <laughs> it looks like one of those Matrix type characters. You know, like, it does it. I am going to hmm. tell you all about the Matrix. It just needs a halo. I'm the architect. <laughs> You're yeah. the architect. Yeah. 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 Uh, I need a white it, suit. Ian's below. Uh, say good day, Ian. And, and then Chris Today, Ian. on the on the middle bottom part there there's Chris waving his hand and there's a spot in the corner if you want to take it um, or if you don't that's fine I will put the chatties in there for now uh, because you know they're more important than you anyway uh, where are we chatties there we go let's chuck them in there look at that instantaneous success with that fantastic let's get stuck into the show now we start off each week saying hello to our guests and um, you may have something to, that you want to talk to us about. So that would have been an opportunity for you to jump on Zoom. But you're too late now because we're going to go across to Darren. <laughs> how are you, Darren? <coughs> Good day. All right. Not too bad. Um, how are you? Good. Wasn't there last week, though. So. Yeah, I wouldn't have made it. Oh, you were missed, mate. Yeah, we missed you. We talked about <laughs> you. We do. You might we have did. talked about me, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't make it back in time, so there's no point in trying to rush. Um, I did watch it back, though, because you're talking about um, writing or writer's block at some point. I think, and something Ian said, 
uh, about when he was writing, like, or when he when he comes up with ideas for either albums or tracks, and they can be quite. Well, I won't say odd because I'm the same. But when he said like he had, he might find a book or some pictures. Mm, uh, of, yeah. I think it was architecture, if I remember rightly, and it sort of. It was yeah. I bought a book on concrete. Concrete, that's the one. Mm, yeah. Concrete. Uh, well, <laughs> I was gonna. If it had been here, I'd have said I have. I, I sometimes do have a similar thing when I write albums or have ideas for albums. It's not necessarily music that sparks the idea off. Sometimes it can be, I think, from the twenty the, that big album, the twenty one twenty one space album. That was just because I watched um, a YouTube video on, I think it was, one of the asteroids that came by, uh, and I just got right. fascinated by it, and that triggered the actual whole album of being space and now it, all the names connected to some sort of space thing, and then researching it. And the same with photographs. Sometimes you get a photograph from like in sort of different buildings. It sort of triggers yeah, yeah. ideas. Doesn't mm. doesn't necessarily give you the music, but it gives you ideas to create something yeah, around no, it. it. So if it had been here, I would have, uh, I'd have just been saying, <laughs> yeah, sort of similar things that happens to me. What have I been doing this week? I've been messing about. I'm trying to get a track out for tomorrow because uh, I'm a bit late on that. Um, still doing the live set, but it's almost pretty much finished because I've been mapping. I've been mapping. Voila, var. I've been mapping that um, because the other half has got a computer with an i3 and Windows 10, so I can get the editor, so I can map it on that. Uh, the only thing is, for live, this is going to be interesting because these are very sen- Oop, uh, these are very sensitive. So if that's in front of you and you've got it mapped to something important and you accidentally touch it, <laughs> so uh, plan is not to map it to anything important. Um, the good thing about it, though, is uh, I like the way you can decide on whether it's going to USB out, MIDI out, CB out, all three, one or the other. So it's quite quite interesting that way. So yeah, so I've been mapping that. So that's all prepped. Um, the boxes that I had with the little like plug on, <laughs> they're working. They're all fine. They're mapped. So this might give you a clue. They're mapped to the APC sixty four. So that's working. Um, I've right, just right, got right. one little issue, which is not not an issue, but it just uh, on one of my map because one of my synths, the Micro Monster. Every time I use a, a new patch or a new bank, um, <laughs> obviously it's a looped bank, so it keeps setting off the bank number to, for on my Micro Monster. But because it's looped, it keeps on resetting it back to the. Um, <laughs> actual you know if i if i alter the if i alter the filter or anything in in live thing uh, as it comes to the end of the loop it'll then set it back to how it was yeah. on that setting so i've got to work out how i can get around that mm. but other than that uh everything's fine live set is almost finished so you will see at some point very soon a full rig set up on facebook Ooh. and yeah that's that's been my week or two weeks because I wasn't there last week. <laughs> I hope that's filled you all in. Yeah, it has. Nice. Thanks, Darren. That was excellently summarised. Fantastic, Darren. Anyway, we're going to cross over to the other side of the world, where Eddie's just showing us hey, the dawn sunrise. of time. Yay! Look at the sunrise. Ooh. Look at that. Uh, it's not washed out with a shitty camera. Sorry, but it's beautiful uh, color. So very nice. Looking over yeah, sunny nice. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, the ugly parking lot down below. So, yeah, had a great day at Valley of Fire yesterday. I didn't get a chance. There's zero bars out there, so I couldn't live stream it, so I'm going to upload it later. But um, So with that in mind, there's a bunch of stuff. This happens with late arrivals at the airport and a bunch of other nonsense. And full day yesterday, and I just live stream until about two hours ago or three hours ago, so I'm super tired. So I may only hang out for about a half hour here. Um, because I have a lot of driving to do today. Um, so, and I, I actually I forgot to ask, uh, well, I didn't know what the show topic is. What is the... The topic this week? Uh, yeah. Not really much of a topic this week. So, just, just shooting yeah. the shit? Okay. Just shooting the, shooting right, no the breeze, yeah. Mm. Cool, okay. So just always happy to be here no matter what, uh, even if I'm half awake, so... I am I am going to show your, <laughs> your price watch things, Andy, so um, you may not... You may not be here for that, but um, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I didn't get to show them last week. Um, yeah. yeah, no worries. Yes, yeah, I know you're busy, so yeah, I was working last uh, week. Always a good yeah. time, uh, and uh, I will uh, 
I have this problem, and maybe you guys know why this does this. I know Wagyu comments on sometimes because every time I do a live stream on YouTube, it auto locks it, and I have to go back and unlock it for anyone to see it. And I can't find that setting for that anywhere. I cannot turn that goddamn thing off. What a lock. So it's really annoying. I'd rather just it auto privates it when I finish the stream. Oh. oh. And I have to go and, and it's fine. I go and turn it on or whatever. But if I'm mobile, yeah, yeah. I can't do that. And it's just like now I have to get home. And people are like, "Hey, where did the stream go?" And I go, "You have I don't to get know. into a desktop." Yeah. 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 And it's a, it's it, that's. I have you guys a feeling. Have problem? I have You're... a feeling I did have that a long time ago, and I do believe there is something that you can do to change that. Yeah. Um, it might actually I did, be. I looked for videos on it. I went deep into the so settings everywhere. But it I might actually be. It, it might be in the actual stream settings of. So when you actually launch a stream, I um, check that too. I look at everything. Yeah, because what I do when I do these streams is I use the previous stream settings and then I go and edit mm -hmm. it, and that means that every show generally is going to have the same settings. I turn things like monetization off and things like that. So um, it would have happened at some stage. And let me just go to here. So we're talking to each other. It would have happened at some stage where I would have turned that thing off because I do remember it happening. Maybe it's a VMix thing. VMix takes care of it for you or something. I don't know. No, no, it's because I don't use vMix to stream because um, I stream uh, out of the back of an ATEM and the ATEM sends okay. it to YouTube and then I turn turn the stream on at YouTube. So, ah, that's it, okay. Yeah, right, right, so right. vMix is just basically a switcher for me at the moment. I could use it for okay, streaming, right. but it's quite taxing on this old PC of, of mine and I uh, haven't got the money to buy a new PC. So take the streaming duties off the PC, it makes my PC sort of survive a bit better during a show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that looks awesome where you are. Yeah, that's frustrating. Like that. mm. Yeah, Wago well, asked about carpets. There it is again. Beautiful, beautiful, fancy, oh. fake French carpets. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> fake French carpets. Well, everything Same here is fake, right? It's, it's fake, fake town. Yeah. Oh. That's awesome, man. Thanks so for I joining us from Vegas. About 20, 30 minutes. I'm pretty tired, but I'll hang out for a while anyway. So thanks. Appreciate you joining us. Awesome, mate. As always, lovely to have you, and also with you, Ian. Yay. How's your week been, mate? Thank you very much. Uh, been good. Hello, good day, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Uh, yeah, I've been. I've met up with some friends. I went to meet my friend Ryan, who came over from Leeds, came down to London. Uh, I also reviewed a, a theatre production, so we're getting sort of back into that a little bit. You know, uh, a pre Edinburgh show. Uh, I put the video for that, and I went to see uh, my my long, t a very old friend of mine, a guy called Colin Potter, who runs IC Records, uh, and he showed me his studio, which was just brilliant, actually. Sadly, I didn't take any video footage of it, but uh, we just and we just chatted and shot the breeze for about three hours, really, drinking loads of tea. Um, I've got a gig, I've got a job, um, I'm going to be playing piano for a, an alt country artist so i need the keyboard because uh, mm. I, I didn't bring a keyboard with me so i've bought a carry-on which is i think you probably covered it on the oh, show wow. at one point yeah yeah i do remember uh, those yeah the little yeah, fold-up ones uh, yeah that's right it's crap <laughs> <laughs> it really What's is the surprise I mean, yeah, um, I, I bought the I, actually I bought it. I did buy it cheap off Amazon because uh, it, it's got it has got aftertouch, but um, the the travel on the keys are pretty poor. The main the main problem with it is the sounds the sounds of like things like the piano and organ. All I need is a, de a half decent piano and a half decent organ, and it's pretty poor, really. If I'm honest. Uh, yeah, so did you see will, the cheap one I covered at Nam? It was modular. No. Oh, is that the one that all plugs uh, together? It's a bunch of things, and they automatically find each other, and it has a, a foot pedal yeah, with it and everything. I, yeah, I have, it's, I have it sounded seen amazing. That. Yeah. Did it? Well, I mean, I only need yeah. this for well, hopefully two or three weeks. We have signed our contracts on the house. That's all the house news you're going to get at the moment. Um, so we've sent them off. So uh, we in, it folds in up theory, a little bag. It goes in a little bag. It's really portable. So I don't know. I'll find a link uh, and send it to you if you want. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, like I say, I only need it for a few weeks. So, uh, I'll, I mean, I need to send it back to Amazon by the end of April. But it will probably go back because I'm not 100% sure. It might actually be faulty, but it does work. Um, and what else? Oh, yeah, and I've just been working on the audio file radio show, which will be out on Monday because it's the 1st of April. Um, but no, Yay. good week, actually. Lots of fun stuff. Definitely check out his uh, his podcast, guys. Um 
It's on the uh, what's it, that app called again? Um, 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 it's, it's on. You can get it on Apple. Uh, you might not get it on uh, Spotify because they keep deleting. No, no, the, for some reason. The the podcast app. What's that called again? Oh um, yeah, it's it's um, uh, Podbean. Podbean. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Podbean. You get it on Podbean, but it's it's on Apple. Uh, it's on. It should be on most of them, but like I say, uh, Spotify for some weird yeah. reason <coughs> keep deleting. It's definitely on Apple because that's what um, I listen to all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you. And then there's a cut. There's a cut down version that goes on YouTube, which uh, I have to cut out tracks that get blocked. You know. Um, yeah. Mm. So some tracks get blocked. For so they have to reasons. delete it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. And by the way, you look nice and crisp and clear today. It must be that yeah. London internet. It, well, and actually, it's, uh, it's interesting because my my son's internet is 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 is, a, is meant to be really really good. Uh, and but it, it does drop out from time to time, which I'm quite surprised at that. Really, and what we've also noticed around London is there are some really horrible blank spots where you almost can't get any 4G and 5G. You know, okay. we went to a restaurant in um, uh, probably about uh, it took about a 40 minute walk actually from here uh, the other the other night, and uh, I was trying to trying to text my son uh, through WhatsApp. Absolutely no chance. Couldn't get couldn't get 4G. You know, so London's not all it could not, not all it's cracked up to cracked up to for the Wi-Fi front. Yeah, or with the five G, there's, there's issues with getting around buildings and through concrete and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. So of course, yeah, yeah, they have to put more of those repeater antennas up everywhere. And I guess the telcos, it's a cost for them to do that. So you know, sometimes yeah, they don't exactly. bother. Yeah. 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 All right, let's cross over to Chris. Chris is uh, a bit closer to home. How are you, mate? How's yeah. your week been? My week's been pretty awesome. I've had a pretty awesome week. Um, if uh, so, I hope everyone's well. And uh, if you celebrate Easter, then happy Easter. If you don't celebrate Easter, eat hot cross buns because they're yummy. Um, yeah, this week, a couple of acquisitions, actually. Well, first of all, I'll start with explaining better what I didn't explain last week. The case that I was building now looks like a case. Yay! It did hey. a terrible, terrible job of showing it last week, but that's actually, it actually looks like a case and it's all glued together and stuff. So that's good stuff. Um, but on the case front, I have another case. I have acquired an Arturia rack boot. Yay! And uh, yeah, I, I met some guy at the, back, at the back of a pub. It was dumb or someone dodgy or something, you know. Got it at <laughs> some cheap price or something. No, no, I'm kidding. No, I actually, I actually got this off Rance. Watch it works. Rance, Watch it works, old, Chris. Uh, you know, no, the, you know, that's yeah. famous, yeah, that case. Well, yeah, it does. It, it is an extremely heavy, weighty thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's very over engineered. Uh, it's going to be interesting to use. Um, I've done a few uh, sort of not mods, but I am intending to do a mod. Um, I've arranged it, it, you might notice, it's actually upside down. Yeah, I did that too. the reason why it's upside, yes, okay. So it's upside down so that um, the actual power supply has an easier route to the back yeah. of the board and blah, 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 blah. And I may change this little connector out for, is it? Which way am I going? Other way. This connector out for yeah. a right angle one. Um, yep, so. To give you a bit more HP as well, if you take that little. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Four HP um, module out and move it somewhere else. I think you'll get some more HP out of it. Yeah, you can do that as well. Put it on the back. It's, is that um, other case? Do you have so, a one-use space in there? Yeah, you do. No, sorry, on oh, my little one. Yes, this yeah, one. You mean? You, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah okay. One U up this, the top. This is this is makeshift yeah. as one U, which isn't really one U, but it is one U. Oh, it's not the IntelliJ um, size. This it it's is. A, it's a Clayton's one U. It's it's a three D printed low profile one. It accepts yeah. one unit units and it has little pressed in um, uh, brass M three screws, and then it has other modules that I put in that can support you know um, normal three U modules on their side, mm -hmm. and you could yeah. kind of swap it and I have an adapter to do that. Yeah, those are cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They're they're pretty common, but this is just my system. You know, I do like doing. Inventing little systems and 3D printing its good fun stuff. And speaking of 3D printing, uh, oh, yes. I also um, put something together this week. Um, little, a little, little slideshow for you. I'm sure 
got that going. Might just oh, this is a little case. Uh, sorry, a case. It's a um, keyboard stand. stand for my yeah keyboard yeah. stand for my Arturia uh, Mini Freak, um, which I've three D printed with my buddy. I designed it and got uh, it's in gold, believe it or not, which was a bit of an experiment. <laughs> and, I, and I love it. It's not solid gold. It's only you know it's point. It's it's infinity carats gold. <laughs> <laughs> it's um but it's 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 it turned out really well and I'm really happy with it and it's really over engine here which is always a good thing and it's just a bit of a pity that it's going to be almost invisible because <laughs> it's sitting a keyboard sitting on it but um is that the metal cool. powder filament the gold metal powder it's, filament that that's no, kind of no, heavy No it's not a sintered it's not a sintered one it's just a kind of gold PLA plus they call it Yeah it's oh, just okay. a color cuz I have a I have one that has yeah. the metal in it and it's heavy mm. yeah yeah, that this, this one is pretty meaty because it's just a very over -neared. It's 40 millimeters thick each leg. And um, I think it's, yeah, it's the size of the Mini Freak, so you can kind of get a, get an idea of what it is. Um, but I'll It'll do the job, though. That's for sure. It will do the job. And, um, yeah, no, it's just a fun little thing I thought I'd share there. Um, the other thing that came along this week, acquisition-wise, was uh, this little fella here. Yes. Feedback modules. Hello, ladies. <laughs> um, yes, it has been switched on. That's all I've had time to do. With oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this so is I'm the this is the VCS three oscillator, this is guys. VCS three oscillator. Actually, it's yeah, it's, it's oscillator B. So it's the B one. The A one is the green colored one. Oh yeah, the A one has the, a couple more features, doesn't it? It's a different. So the A one has. Uh, I think the A1 has an additional sine wave output or something. Mm. The other one has a pulse width output instead. But one's got more waveforms, the other one's got variable pulse width. But apparently it's true of... It's true to what the original has. So, it... I think so. Yeah. Um, in particular, because um, uh, Rance was over here looking at it with me as well uh, when I unboxed it. Um, and, uh, yeah, we did... It does have that uh, fancy balanced transistor thingo package that looks like it comes from the 1950s and 60s space program, Apollo space program. Mm. It's a metal shelled transistor. You don't see them every day. Um, it's definitely he, got one of those in it. So it's he talks cool. about that on his website too. I, I can't remember what he actually said at the time. But we, we, we talked about him a couple of weeks ago on yeah, the show. Though. It's, been on, it's been on the show. You can go back and see what... Um, what uh, Is that just surplus or they still make those? No, it's, it's only just been launched. The module. I think no, I mean, mean the, the, the transistor, the metal. Oh, transistor. the transistors. Yeah. It's a, it's a he didn't question. say. I th yeah, he didn't say. I think say. it's new old stock, so I think it's uh, possibly right, okay. new old stock. I don't know. It might be many. There's always a risk when mm. your manufacturer does that, though, because it means yeah. that they mm. either can't get them anymore when they run out, or if it's some bizarre sort of part that you know they feel like the manufacturer is going to keep making them, they might just stop making them. It'd be like the 808 half broken transistor that made the sound so great. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, that's awesome, Chris. Hoi, where'd you go? Yeah. So, oh. yeah, I'm just trying to get myself back again. Hey. Oh, damn. I have a few wrinkles there. Um, yep, so uh, the other cool thing is that I had an extended birthday. <laughs> I had my birthday last week. I had it again this week because we, because we merged it into, um, into Easter, into Good Friday. Um, so I had a birthday party last night. And uh, that's when people Yay. actually gave me actually gave me presents rather than me buying presents for myself. Ah. Including and Darren will like this. Darren, this is a glue oh. gun. Oh. And uh, <coughs> this, this this is the end you put the glue in, and this is the pointy end. You point that towards the thing you want to do. <laughs> and then you squeeze the trigger. Oh, I would. You don't squeeze it and keep on squeezing it if you don't want this glue to come out. So, just some tips there for you, mate. <laughs> I, I think it's more. I, it, my, I think it's more that the glue. I managed to. Work, I managed to work that bit out. I think it was the glue wasn't uh, strong enough. Big glue paint oh. and everything, and, and I think we were sort of yeah. porous. We, it was fantastic. We were all glued to the screen then, Darren. Just, yeah, oh, well. was too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah cool. But mine's a corded okay. one. Yours is cordless. I take it. Oh yes, I um, I I specifically asked for something I didn't already have. I got a few corded ones. Is that the Ryobi one? Yeah, that's the yeah, Ryobi yeah. one. It's yeah. the not the super expensive one, but it actually. It might be I'm enjoying that Ryobi stuff because I've got a few of them now, mm. and they yeah, 
that you just use the same use. battery, yeah, yeah, for everything. They're, yeah, they're actually really good. Yeah. Ah, I'm really how strong is the glue in it? The glue to sniff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, well it, um, it's woo. not coming off the paper, um, so it sticks. It just sticks. <laughs> oh, no, it eventually comes off the paper. Yeah. It's t- it's typical. I assume it's normal. Hot snot, right? Pretty it's normal. Just sort of, t- your typical hot yeah. snot. It's just typical hot snot. So. Yeah, but the, the the size of the glue sticks is a bit um, <laughs> non-standard, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how I get get replacements for them and stuff like that. Daz in chat reckons but, you're not supposed to eat it. What, uh, Daz? <laughs> Well, they always say that about snot, don't they? <laughs> That's what they told me when I was a kid. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, you started it. Yeah. Anyway, that's me. <laughs> Done. Out. Awesome. Not going to take up any more time. This well, show. I've got some show and tell. Hey! Hey! Yay. No, it's not. It's not that good. Um, okay, so I did. I have been talking about this for a few weeks, guys. As I have been mentioning that I'm going to be doing my case. And I, I forgot to show you guys. These are the actual uh, Noctua nice. PWM fans that you can get. And I've never opened this, so we can do a little unboxing if you like. Unboxing. Ooh, ooh, yeah, oh, yeah. Look at that prettiness. Look, it's even got a shiny, like, look at the packaging on this. Like, no wonder these things cost what they cost. Wow. It's insane mm-hmm. packaging. I mean, this is a computer case fan, right? So uh, it's a different market, but, like, wow. the amount of packaging and... I don't know. It looks lovely. It is very lovely. Anyway, let's unbox the bugger. Because we can. Hooray. Um, let's get it over here and we'll open it and pull it out. As the actress said to the bushel. Right. Um, there we go. It's quite a big fan. It's 120 centimeters, if you're wondering, for those playing along at home. And the Noctuas, they have. Oh dear, everything just fell out. The Noctuas, they have a patented design on their fan blades um, to make them super quiet. But I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, these are kind of like a rubberized mount. So they're all the way around all the edges. This is kind of like, you know, your standard sort of molded plastic, right? Fans are a different color, but same plastic. And then on the reverse side, see how they've got these little notches? Around so there's yeah yeah so this and it's and they're also they're not straight so you can see they've got a slight oh, uh, convex to the design so well, these tiny little things make them quieter apparently and part also the mechanism inside the bearings and stuff that they use inside um, now the reason why I've used this particular one is because they're five volts and I'm going to use my five volt rail on my case so there you go there's the noctuas and can't hear anything. Look, I bring it up to the mic. <laughs> Completely silent. Can't hear anything. Um, no, the whole the whole point about the the PWM for those who didn't watch the show a few weeks ago and want to know what's going on um, is they uh, you can basically spin them right down to almost to the point where then they're, they're not even turning around, um, and so you've got like complete control over their um their speed and uh that might be actually pretty important for a computer case it might not be so much mm-hmm. important for a euro rack <laughs> case but hey. fun fact noctua is a genus of moth and uh since they're quiet flyers like owls they're called little owls as well yeah so it's latin for little owl because they are silent flyers mm-hmm. so. oh there's a whole owl, in on that box flyers. there's literally a whole bunch of information about oh they talk about that yeah oh, cool. there's there's a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> yeah. on there uh you'll Cute. probably be able to pause it Sorry, I'm, just, I'm just a nerd so yeah know. i love it too like and the, oh, like, i've bought fans from an electronic shop and and that mm-hmm. fan that fan cost me around about 45 bucks australian so 22 pounds so it's not a cheap yeah. fan when you okay. think about it because uh, electronic shop yeah, would probably be... just came in. The sun just came up. Nice. Electronic shop would probably be a bit half the price, right? <laughs> so anyway, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll let you guys know how how that goes. So, and uh, and and that was kind of my news. But um, speaking of rack brutes, I do have one more for sale. So if anyone wants it, <clears throat> let me know. Uh, I'll be parting with it. Uh, it. It is actually I'm kind of a bit sad to get rid of it, but I don't need it. So it it is actually a really really nice Euro rack case uh so and you'll be able to pick one up cheaper than what you can buy in brand new so yeah um 
we should get on and say hello to the chatties. I kind of lost my way for a sec there. Hey, we've got Robbie Puricelli in the chat, and uh, hey, we've Robbie. got Andy Synchrotron kissing the machine. How are you, all of you? Wagoo's there. Steve Crasshead's there. Bert Asiohead's there. Matt Brown is also there. And big hello to uh, David and Kent, who are our channel members that are in the chat. So you'll notice that they've got the special logo next to the name. So hello to them. Um, Daz Moz said he's from the other side of Australia, so he'd be up late because it's three hours difference now over there. That really sucks. So you'd, you'd, we pretty much for the next six months, we're not going to get hardly anyone from Australia on this show now because uh, it's just too late for the other side of the country. Uh, Max there, big hello to you. Um, I think I saw Josh before. No, oh, right. Robin said, uh, Native VS, nice to see you, mate. Haven't seen you for a while. I know you do stuff on Saturday, so uh, well done for jumping in. Um, that's awesome. And Brett Lemmings, nice to have you, bud. And who else did I see? I did see some, a few others. Um, I saw Babs, yeah, there's Babs. Nice to have you there. Paul Holmes. Um, I think JP Page <coughs> Tour, if I mentioned that before, making a joke with him before. He was he was uh, saying your camera was a bit blurry, Darren, and I was saying that he was saying that you, you you've lost focus, and I said, yeah, he just he tends to lose no, focus quite a lot. I've never had focus, <laughs> never mind lost that. <laughs> See, that's a good joke. Uh, Chudy B says, "G'day, peeps. Uh, g'day to Chudy B." And then Gitz there. Um, also, I've decided to scroll up today instead of scrolling down. It seems to be working better for me. George Kempson's there. Um, I think that'll do. I think I've probably missed a few, but I think that'll do for now. Uh, you can, you guys get the gist. It's a, it's a pretty decent bunch of people in the chat. You can see them scrolling by. Um, and don't forget, like I said, Zoom is there. The no one's in there. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I don't know why. It's an echo uh, chamber. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we should get stuck into the show. We do have our regular segment, starting with this one. Yes. <laughs> this one could be quite funny. Uh, Robbie, this one's for you. Um, <laughs> found this one on uh, on Facebook today. Mm. <laughs> quite interesting. Yes. <laughs> danger. Oh, um, danger. Uh, Warning. Okay. Warning. Funny, but not that funny. Next. Um, Stems is here for the NPC. Yay! But it's only in software. But I need it on my NPC. You'll have to wait. Screw you, man! <laughs> so if you, if you, that's actually quite good, I thought. Because I was doing that today. I'm like, oh, it's here. Cool. Right. And I logged on to the Akai Pro website. And I'm like, oh, it's the software only. And then I thought, like, okay, I have a massive question. And, and I can't find the answer on their website. I think just about everyone would have the same question. If I parted with my ten nine dollars ninety nine US to get it for the software does that mean I it just automatically comes for free later for me for my NPC or do I have to pay for it again and I couldn't find the answer someone will be able to tell us though um, so that's why I'm like screw you man I'm, I'm kind of with him <laughs> I'm with him yeah. and it'll take Who's even longer me? to get to the force so <laughs> yeah oh, anyway. God, yeah they won't even probably even mm. frustration even for... yeah this does this sound oh, sorry does this snare sound good <laughs> <laughs> yes but obviously it's not me then. <laughs> I love this. This was really, really clever. Uh, that was really well done. Uh, I think that was... Especially the little tear. Uh, I think it's Daniel it's like from tear. the Synth Memes group that sent that one in. So well done, Daniel. Um, and this one was also, I thought, clever. I made a musical patch on a Buchla once. No, you didn't. Well, not me personally, but a guy I knew. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> oh, that was so Poor good. <laughs> you do, mate. You, you definitely make musical patches on a bootle by redefining what music. He is. made a patch. There's no doubt about it. He made a patch, but there is another word in there: musical patch. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. I love bootle. Bootle's good. Uh, and what else do we have? We have this one from Jim Hayward, who is literally the synth mean god. Um, could someone please put a nicer background on my photo, please? Sure. Here you go. <laughs> oh, I love those Photoshop troll things. Those are great. 
Uh, that was great. That was very good. I like this one a lot. Um, okay, what we're going to do is we are going to do a poll today Ooh. in the chat. We're going to go, what Ooh, was tip, your tip. favorite meme? Is getting question mark. Uh, question mark. Add option. Option one. Here we go. Let me see if I can do this really stupidly quick. Option one is going to be this one, which is... We'll call it uh, new DX7. DX7. Yeah. All right. Option two is going to be this one, which is going to be NPC, NPC stems. Seven. Option three. By the time I've done it, you guys will probably just give us your options. <gasps> oh, does it not yeah. give me any more yeah. options? What? It only gave me three. Oh. It only gave me two options. What? Must be a way to add. Yes, I know. I want to see. Another. I want to see what it does. This is a new feature, by the way. Uh, you guys can only you guys can only vote. <laughs> what was your favourite meme? Yes or no? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So yes, yes is for so this, this is one for the happens. bugler, and no will be for for Jim's photo, and then we'll just have to do this one later. I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that's no. that's that's no. Is it, Grant's That one there. Everyone's. So this one is no. Okay. This one is yes. All right. And I'm going to go the, yes. And these are the other two <laughs> options that were already there, or three options. That is pretty cool. Wow. Snare. Wow, it's all over the shop. How, yeah. how do I look at this thing? I like how it's like floating above. Hey, let's have a look yeah, at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You click on <coughs> it and it expands. There you go, look at that. Collapses. It's floating. It's floating around. You click at it and it opens. Oh, here we go. So we've got 48% saying no. All right, now that one was... We don't know what it was now. <laughs> yeah. That it was, was not the Buchler one. Oh, you might have pressed... Oh, I might have pressed the wrong one. No, no, no. Um, hang on, let's go to here. So that one was what? That's the stems. The stems came after that, didn't it? Yeah, that's the stems. So that would be yes, that would be no. So this is the Buchler one. Oh, everyone's going for the bucolan. Well, oh, I thought. It was yeah, well, I picked. I, <laughs> no, I, we all thought yeah. no was the um, the the background swap. I think you could have to. Have I mean, I picked like, Which did you think no was? <laughs> <laughs> that really that really sucks. Like you can only what have like you, you can only have a couple of ideas in your poll. Well, like, there's yes and no, so it looks like it's a maximum of four. But you had to you probably had to delete or edit. The yes and no by default. It's probably there by default. In fact, on my, on my iPad, I'm not seeing the poll at all. But um, all right. Well, well look, in reality, we have it worse. We only have Republican or Democrat. So is the child having two choices? Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's say yeah. let's say hey, let's man. say that one won. Okay, that one won. Yeah. All right. I'm going to end the poll. And I the poll sucks. Hey. <laughs> oh, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. I got oh, it. Oh, there you go. Look at that. On the, uh, what was your favourite oh, meme? Well, yeah. No. There you go. It gives you the oh, comp it's in 25 the votes. Yeah. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay. Pretty cool, apart from the lack of options. Um, mm. oh, we <laughs> either is no correct answer. Come. That's right, Daz. No <laughs> correct answer. There the answer is, no is 42, point. says Andy. <laughs> it is, That's mate. Good point. It is. Um, we shall head on to the news. Good job, everyone. Yes, uh, there is a new product from Roland. It is the Go Keys. There's actually two of them. There's the Go Keys three, not that there's three of them. This is just model number three. Um, and then there's the Go Keys five. And the Go Keys three comes in those flavors, lime and I don't know, I don't know why they called it lime, but it's not it's not really lime. Oh, no. is it? It's like teal. It's like a no, teal, isn't it? It's teal, yeah. 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 And those other two colors, and then the Go Keys. Goki's five comes in in charcoal and white or silver or whatever it is. Anyway, it's so these black. are these are these two, right? So, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, what can we tell you about this? Who doesn't really know anything about this? It's basically a ZenCore synth with um, about a thousand, you know, sounds in it built in, but you can update them via these um, Roland Cloud. Um, there's 74 drum kits and there is a whole bunch of effects with uh, 
a tone, a total tone, a tonal M MFX with two different types. Sorry, with ninety three different types, but two different options, and a total MFX with one different op with one option and fifteen different types, and a reverb for the whole thing. Uh, so the effects is pretty decent, as as most Roland gear is these days. Uh, sixty one keys. They only velocity uh, box shaped uh keys and they are fixed touch basically uh there is a built-in speaker it's a little um 12 by 6 centimeter um speaker inch speaker they the on the three which is the one you're looking at they are a little tinny sounding but if you go with the five they've got a little bass um speaker in them as well so they sound a little bit nicer and that's like one of the major differences between the two uh, the other difference between the two is that the 5 has also got a mic input and it has a whole bunch of vocal effects processing in it as well. But the big thing about this, if you're wondering, is that it's more kind of like um, it, it lays down like a, a sort of an arrangement with chord progressions and stuff like that. So let's have a look at the video because he kind of really shows it. It is a bit cringe i'm going to warn you now the video is a bit cringe um if you haven't seen it but it's aimed remember this guys it's aimed at a certain market um so uh it may not be our market but let's have a look anyway That's me. <laughs> e flat major. Oh, he's got a hit. C minor. Oh, that's not me. So the progression goes like this. <laughs> that's better drums than I do. Isn't it sweet? He woke up, he had some more ideas. <laughs> you don't wander slowly into the room when you get an idea and you wake up in the morning. <laughs> With your clothes <laughs> on. And you've got your coat. As quickly as possible. And you've got your coat on. Bloody forget it. <laughs> you guys get the idea, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, Darren, I can't help you, mate. Honestly. Uh, um. Actually, After let's go to you. Not a bad let's effort. go to you, big oh, fella. On. Come on, let's, let's <laughs> reminds, see your thoughts. It reminds me of um, the Yamaha PSR days. You know when you used to get them in the catalogs. Mm, yeah. Like little, yeah. That, that's that's sort of the market it's aimed at, isn't it? But for a modern modern day twenty twenty four type teenagers. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I will go with the uh, one note thing. But I don't. If it's going to make me suddenly play keys like that, maybe I'll get the teal one. <laughs> but Darren, did you know that it actually yeah. has it actually has Bluetooth, mm. and it is also battery powered, so you can do this on your park bench if you like. I'm not. Sh I don't know whether I'd want to sit there with a till one of them on the park bench, though. It's, it's not a, quite the vibe. Yeah, it's a bit mm. too big, isn't it? It's, like, it's too big, yeah, right? Whole <laughs> that's not. The that's whole not bench. AP. That's not. That's not. Uh, Park bench compatible. That that's going too big. <laughs> it's like um, hogging the park yeah. bench. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's your park bench and anyone next yeah. to you. Uh, so I'm told afraid that can't go into the <laughs> Darren's don't park come bench. Near me, I'm making music. A guy told me who's got one of these, and maybe you got one as a as a beta tester or something. He said they're extremely portable. In other words, uh, it's easy to carry one of these around with you. Uh, on a bus or a train or whatever um, and he did actually like the accompaniment section on it where it uh, he said it had a really really deep amount of chord progressions um, it had this kind of um, preset style accompaniment thing it kind of reminds me a little bit with what Korg did with the M3 with the um, what was that thing called again Karma Labs uh, it kind of reminded oh, yeah. me a little bit of that 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's um, the, the accompaniment is probably the big thing about this. It's not so much the synth and what it can do. It's more about the you know you sort of generating your own sounds with chord progressions mm. and accompaniment. Well, for, for the market, it's aimed at. It's fine, mm. but uh, it's, it's not sort of aimed at us, really. Yeah. No, not at all. It's not really a synthesizer as per se, I, is it? Although I do think we need it? to know about it because of the inevitable questions that we'll get from three forty nine. Sorry, uh, Chris, just ask answer Ian's question quickly. Three forty nine, and then four four ninety nine for the for the five, something like that. Three forty nine, I think, is the the cheaper one anyway. Sorry, mm -hmm. you go ahead, Chris. What? No, I was just going to say we do need to know about this because of the inevitable questions from our nieces and nephews that we get. Um, yeah. How do I get? Yeah, is it music? good? Should I <laughs> get I a get, roll and I go? Get this? Is this gonna? Is this gonna get me my career? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> yeah, don't well, buy we a do carry know on. about it now. We can't say, oh, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. I'm not saying whether you should or not. I'm just showing you it. No. And I mean, I have my opinion. It's not for me, but it does, doesn't mean the I don't JDXI is still a strong contender, but you have to figure it out, right? So, well, JD, JDXI is more a synth, right? It's got an analog synth in it. It's actually well, definitely it's, you know, four parts. And you can cleverly synth, make it six yeah. parts if you want. And, you oh, know, and yeah. and if you want to look for it's the deeper. cheese, you know, the yeah, rolling cheesiness in it. There's the JDXI has rolling cheesiness all over it. <laughs> um, but yeah. this it also has beautiful supernatural sounds too. Yeah, but this is worse <laughs> for cheesiness. Yeah, for um, definitely. Yeah, um, it. It does power itself on as as I said before on AA batteries. Um, it does it. It's pretty low powered. It's only a seven watt power consumption on this thing. So I, I would say those batteries will last a reasonable amount of time. Good five um, minutes, probably. It, I was thinking Darren needs a new graphic when he's talking to review stuff. He needs a thing that goes psh, PBC, Park well, Bench compatible. Well, if you're using yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're using the um, if you're using the nickel metal hydride uh, rechargeable batteries, which is your kind of standard ones that you get at the double A's, mm -hmm. they roll and reckon it probably should only you know it should last about six hours, and they reckon there's a capacity of about 1,900 milliamp hours on that. So that's not bad. Um, but if you're just using standard alkaline double A's, it'll be about five hours. So you lose a little bit on the double on the double A's on the alkalines. No. Um, and I reckoned the more you know, the more stuff you push through it, the louder it is, and things you know, turn the volume up, and that mm -hmm. that will definitely yeah, choke the the battery it. time. You can run it off power. Yeah, people don't use it's not just battery. Right? Yeah, you can run it off power. There's a DC jack on it. People tend not to use the rechargeable the NIMS anymore. Right? They don't want to wait for them, I guess. Yeah, and and the and yeah, the slow. Uh, so the obviously the lithium ones are much better to use, right? Um, it doesn't yeah. doesn't actually say whether it accepts them, but I'm sure it would. if you can get double A lithiums, I'm sure it would, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought so. I would have thought it'd work on anything. The Bluetooth, as I mentioned before, kind of uh, I thought was interesting. Um, it is version five, so reasonably, you know, up to date Bluetooth with an A2DP audio GAT MIDI over Bluetooth low energy protocol, and it uses the uh, SBC codec. Now, I just wanted to mention that because um, that means that it supports SCMSS T connection protection. So. That's good that they've done that because, um, mm. you know, you can't have someone taken over your synth. <laughs> and you're on a train and someone takes over your synth and uh, starts playing Stairway to Heaven on it or something. And you're like, what? <laughs> What's going on with my synth? Starts playing Jump, you know, load the Jump preset. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, don't expect this keyboard to be fantastic. It'll probably be similar to anything around that price range. Mm. Um, I played the original Go used at a at a local store, and uh, it was okay, you know. But I didn't play with it that much. Yeah, it, it's not it's not as small as you'd think, though. So it, you know how you'd mention JDXI. JDXI is smaller than this. Yeah, because it's got the mini keys there's on a it. The Casio one, isn't there, as well, with a like a handle. Mm. Which would be a lot cheaper. Oh well. yeah, that, those. That, God, that, those that, those terrible. Though. Oh yeah. yeah, some of the samples from that cast. You can stick that in your pocket, I like Darren. The colored knobs you put on there, Darren. Lovely. Exactly. Darren likes his. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, I was a extra I like me. Funky I didn't have any purple ones. But... 
Fun it's it's for when it was plugged for live, so I know where the uh, cutoff is quickly without having to hmm. all black. That's very important. Yes, good point. Well, anyway, Roland Go Keys. Um, I, I guess you know there'll be a market for these things. Um, there is a big market for them. I mean, and it's hmm. it's, it's, it's quite a quite a busy market because there's Yamaha, there's there's Casio in there, you know. Hmm. Uh, and it's not, and, it's, and not, it's not, it's not, it's not cheap. But it, I mean, it's it's well priced at three hundred plus. But you know, you can pick up something that's you know, a starter keyboard for what hundred quid. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, there are and some then, manufacturers who that, do cheaper ones. And that's what parents will do because they don't know that that their child is going to stick at it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you this know, is like yeah. a sort of tear up above from that, isn't it? Yes. It's an in between. Yeah, yeah, it is. It, it is. Yeah, you can write yeah. it off. Yeah. The yeah. the Yamaha PSR is upstairs, and my son hates it. He loves it, but he hates it. Um, yeah. It's for that exact reason, Ian. That exact reason, because yeah. yeah. it's limited. You know, you don't yeah. get uh, the weighted keys. You don't get the full size eighty eight yeah. keys. You don't get the proper piano sound. You don't get the proper <laughs> foot pedal uh, arrangement. As you do with an acoustic piano, mm. um, I I've talked about this before. I just just buy an acoustic piano and we're done. But um, if if you are looking for your child or your teenage child to buy one of these and you think, oh, he's going to learn piano on it, don't go there. Get something different. No. Get like there, there's actually get, a, get. a Roland um, a new Roland product out that is actually pretty decent. I thought it's the um, is it the R. Uh, the R R R R. Um, oh, what is it called? Hang on, I'm going to there, there. is a cog. The yeah. R D O eight. Yeah, I mean, don't quote me on this because I haven't looked recently. But I thought it was a cog piano, Hammer Action piano, B two, three hundred and fifty quid, something like that. You well, know. there is, there so, is. We'll show that. But let's let's have a quick look at the R D O eight first because yeah. I actually think. This is kind of up the alley, right? Um, why did that not go full screen, full screen? That's annoying. Why you not go full screen? Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> let's go here. There's the RD08. So 488 keys. Um, they, they actually aren't yeah. that bad. So if you want to do piano, you know, this is kind of what... And what was the other one, Ian? The, the I think it's the Cog B2 now, but there was there used to be a B1 as well. I thought they were about 350 quid. Sub 400, certainly. Yeah. Granted, it hasn't got... I don't, I don't think it's got speakers in it. Or has it? I can't remember. Mm. It's a while since I've seen one. Why has Google overwritten my view commands? There we go. Better. There is the B2. Ah, oh, it's the B2. It has got speakers in it. Remember it now. Yeah. The, the, the You can probably pick up a B1, which is just as good. You don't need a stand. It doesn't always come with the stand. Uh, it's much more expensive if you buy it with the stand. You can just buy the keyboard, the piano on its own. Yeah. Uh, and it's Which is actually, dozen... that's actually a nice feature, believe it or not. Yeah. Not having to buy the stand. Yeah, it's it's got uh, three or four really really good pianos. They the hammer action is really good. Uh, I used to use one when we had the shop. I used to use one a B one uh, for lessons because it had two. I think it had two headphone sockets as well. Well, the you Korg B two uh, is about a thousand Australian dollars cheaper than the Roland RD eight. So those two products wow. in Australia, uh, so five hundred pounds difference in price. A thousand dollars Australian difference in price. Wow. You can get an, a Korg B2 without the stand for yeah. about six hundred and fifty bucks in Australia. And so, uh, yes, that's three hundred quid then. I mean, I, I'm I'm going to go check out the B2 because I actually didn't know about that. Yeah, that's actually yeah, good, no, I mean, cool, mate. It's uh, it's 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 actually the the, the 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 action on it is better than the Kronos, right? Because I hate the Kronos action, although. Neil, if Neil Walton's in the chat, he'll disagree with me. But I, I, uh, I really quite liked the action on it. Okay, <clears throat> I mean, for him, he is a ten-year-old. Uh, yeah, 
you know, either I buy him a proper acoustic piano, um, which I actually do have one in the family, but I don't want to pay for it to be freighted over here because it'll yeah. be more expensive than buying that cork. Mm. But anyway, we shall keep going because we have some exciting befaco things to look at. Um, we've got the octaves, the octaves VCO. Um, this one's quite interesting. I thought uh, I'm sure you guys have seen the the DivKid mm. video on this, but I'm not going to show you the DivKid video because I'm not allowed to. Um, well, I can, but I'll just have the same problem as I had two weeks ago when I showed one of his videos where I literally get a copyright claim. Again. <laughs> you guys get the idea i think uh it's kind of buclerish isn't it this oscillator mm. um in a, in, a, in a way it's a little bit fme in another way too so um <clears throat> i do like how and, and and the other thing i think it's kind of similar to it's similar to a poly 800 oscillator yep as well so you kind of pick up on that mm. you're kind the of getting four. a yeah you're kind of getting a mix of buclear fm Korg Poly 800 all in one little oscillator. <laughs> Not bad. What do you guys think? You want to know the price? Mm -hmm. uh, this included VAT, so the price, I couldn't actually work it out because I forget which country it was. <laughs> so um, yeah. it'll be cheaper than this. So this is 254 euros including VAT. So it'll for people that don't pay the VAT, it'll be cheaper than that. Um, of course. The kits will be even cheaper. <laughs> yeah, and that's fully assembled, by the way. Um, by the way, if you do want to do a Bafaco kit, they're actually mm. pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, so very, very nice. You yeah. you do probably need to know a little bit about soldering, um, but they are pretty simple to do. It, and every single one has a video, so that's pretty clever. Mm. Can you glue gun them? <laughs> you could put your hot snot <laughs> on it, Darren. If you wanted to, Darren. You could. I don't think it'll work electrically, glue. though. Uh, you might have a problem electrically with it. Um, well, people are always it probably just won't work. Some graphite in the glue, you'll be okay. So. Yeah. People you could, yeah, <laughs> always look for, for mixed glue, though, aren't they? Sprinkle yeah. some metal shavings in the glue. Yeah, you could do that. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, do check out the Ben DivKid video uh, on this mm. because it's ten times better than what you just saw with, um, from Bacar. Not that they don't. They're just showing you the features. Yeah, of this yeah. but ben actually shows this thing in action 
which is yeah, a much better thing. Side, and yeah. I just can't be bothered handling copyright claims this week. Sorry, guys. Uh, not, you know, haven't had a chance to talk to Ben about it. I think he's a busy boy anyway, so we won't worry about that. Okay, next one. There is another Bifaco product, and that's mm. the Pony VCF. Um, this is uh, a little bit different to a VCF in the sense that uh, it's a space-conscious <laughs> low-pass filter, <laughs> but it's also a volume processor, and it's a combination of a VCF and a VCA in one, um, and it's a mixer in that sense. And so, oops, sorry, Mike. It does let you mix the three different sound sources together and shape them with their tone and levels um, with that. It uses, okay, so this is for the nerds, which is me. It uses the SSI um, fat keys chip, which is the 2144, and it has an elegant sound of that classic transistor filter with an associated distortion, which I think like Dave Rossum's, people that like Dave Rossum's sort of, you know, designs will, will definitely know what that means. So let's have a little listen to it. And we'll go there and press play. that slight distortion right there mm. oh. dogs are barking <laughs> go to side waves <coughs> so this is where you get your feedback You could use it as a drum. Mm, could use it as a, that's what I was wondering. The ring my bell. Controllable, yeah. is it? <laughs> using the um, MIDI controller to do that. Okay. Might be a bit misleading then. Mm. 
This is the mixing, right? Does anyone actually know what the reference to the pony? Like he's he's got a couple of products now with the pony yep. name. Mm. Anything that's small, small horse basically. So basically, small modular. Okay, that's that's what Fair I enough. interpret it to mean. Guys in chat were talking about My Little Pony and uh, My Little Pony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Bronies <laughs> approved by Bronies. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I thought that was a nice sort of interesting character type mm. filter and you gotta remember too with Eurorack, you you could have you could have your sound and then you buy a new module like that and then your sound changes so that's the cool thing about Eurorack. you can literally swap in a module like that and it completely changes the character of what sounds you're making um, you might have the same envelope generator oscillator mm. but that filter is literally going to change the character I mean it's an attractive filter so there you go. Anyone want to comment on the VCF? I mean, SSI stuff's good, right? Yeah, Chris. I might get one of these. I'll probably get one of these because I've I really love the Pony VCOs, mm. um, and this is sort of using the same kind of form factor, same kind of spacing between controls, same type of controls. It's quite nice to have the same things behaving the same way sometimes in your module. But yeah, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sold on the filter sound though. I think I need to hear that a bit more. Side with it. it is it is it is a ladder filter, isn't it? It is meant to be a ladder. It's a ladder, filter. yeah. Twenty four dB. Yeah, well, I don't have other ladder six HP module modular at the moment. I mean, I've got ladder filters in all the Moog and the Boog gear, but I don't have a dedicated ladder filter in my module yet. So this might be. That's why I thought it might. Give me that flavour that I don't necessarily go to at the moment. Have an option to go to. Could have a, a lot, lot of other filters. The Bering and nine hundred four is also a good ladder filter. Yeah, yeah. That well, I mean, that's what I've gotten very close to buying a hundred times, but um, mm. just never ended up getting one. Whereas this is like, ooh, it's the same form factor and it's the small little. I I kind of bought into the pony, the sort of Be Befico ecosystem a bit there. I quite joy their their philosophy. Cool. Mm. Awesome. I'll probably get one. And because they're DIY options, which are really attractive for me. And I love that. Yeah, them. so to buy a DIY kit for this, you are looking at, at their shop, 145 euros with tax included. So obviously that will be cheaper for us because we don't pay hmm. the so VAT. Like 20 USD or something. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, and you could probably, yeah, I forget where else you can get them from. You can get them from their own shop, but I think you can also get their kits from... Uh, it might be Thonk. You might do them. Yeah, Thonk. Yep. I saw a Thonk post this week from them talking about these three available. So, yeah. Okay, good. Thonk, and uh, we quite often get a couple, obviously, a couple of stores stock it down here in Australia eventually. Yeah, so Found Sound might be one of them. Um, Absolutely. And Steep Street yep. is another one. If you haven't checked out Steep Street, there are a bunch of... You're at guys from well, they used to be in Katoomba, but I think they're just in they move General yeah. Sydney now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, <clears throat> that's that. That's a bit of flooding. Yeah. That is hey, that. Uh, hey, Randy. Yeah, I got a bowl. I'm turning into a pumpkin. So see you guys later. All right, man. Get some yeah. sleep. Thanks right. for coming, mate. Take care. Yeah, Thank you, mate. Bye bye. See you, boys. Radio. Um, Darren, I can pop you in there. Do, 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 do. That noise that you can hear is my Eurorack. Pong. Yeah. Pinging and ponging. There you go, Darren. <clears throat> Andy's gone, by the way, so he won't get upset. I'll just make sure. Yeah, he's paused. It's good. Right, next is this one, which is called the FX Einheit. <laughs> Um, it's by OMS in Serial. It's the name of the business that does this. Um, 
This was interesting, this product. I found it on Modular Grid, so there's no, there wasn't really any sort of uh, media release. Yeah, well, there is a vid, video. there is a vid. Uh, it's probably not his, I'm not sure whose video it is, so I do have to um, yeah. give the person credit. But it is a stereo multi-effects module based on the uh, Electrosmith Daisy. Um, oh, Daisy C. Yeah. Daisy C, yeah. So it's an Electro Brox, Electro Eurorack, Electro, no, Eurorack Blocks Framework, sorry. And the Daisy Patch Submodule 65M uh, with a reverb and a delay and a multi-mode filter and it has three sections. So you can see across the top, you've got your three knobs, reverb, uh -huh. delay, and filter. Um, mm. This was, I think it was 170 bucks, if I remember, 190, 190, 170 euros. And it is, how many HP? It is 20 HP. 20. Yeah, anyway, let's have a little listen at the vid. I'm trying to get this lined up again with my mouse going all the way over the place. Here we go. A mute switch that guy. <laughs> I mean, the patch is repetitive, but he's trying to show you the different routing options. It's got a freeze, Darren. Always good. <laughs> there you go. The FX Einheit. Mm. Does anyone know what that translates to? Einheit? This guy's French, by the way, um, from what I understand. By the way, the... Oh, the video is actually his. Okay, so that's cool. I don't need to give credit. It's actually his company. Cool. Uh, mm. It is on um, Modular Grid. You can buy it through Modular Grid, or you can buy it... I didn't know you could do that, by the way, um, because they have a marketplace. I thought it was like a used thing. But you can also buy this thing on Tindy as well. Hmm. For me, it's kind of it's Meh. eclectic. This module, uh, it's eclectic. Oh, okay. I kind of felt like it, you're forced into a a world mm. a little bit with this that you yes. may not necessarily want to be. Does that make sense? It's a, it's certainly a different approach to multi effects in the current climate isn't it because usually the the sort of the focus now on multi effects is fairly generic um control interface and every possible combination and configuration of effects called up by selecting three billion programs um and you know it's it's it, the emphasis is on you know <laughs> usually you're dealing with you know fx param one fx param two fx param three fx param four whereas this is a different approach this is very much breaking out the individual components it's virtually wearing its FX hard on its sleeve, I guess you could say, and breaking them out in a very obvious kind of traditional way. It could almost be three different modules that you patch, mm. but it's just been laid out as one module with 
those three subcomponents and then you got rearrangement. So it's kind of old school in a while. Mm. But the interesting thing is that the I didn't find the actual algorithms particularly mm, so didn't really particularly flavorful. Like the filter at the end is kind of like well, that's kind of a functional filter, at least in that example. I mean, that's probably not fair, but it, you know, I'd be very interested to know. It does the? Can you put the filter in the feedback loop of the delay and all that kind of good stuff? I'm sure you can. But um, yeah, it didn't like you know, and the delay wasn't particularly characterful. It didn't really present us with anything new. It feel it still feels a little bit like it's a like a, a DSP project. Yep. The next level on a DSP project. Yeah. He's Which made a panel a for a DSP. I, mean, project. I don't, I don't yeah. want to diss people, diss people yeah. for that, but it is just, and then, you know, it's it's priced fairly well, really considering um, what you're getting for it in terms of you know, panel space and stuff. So you know, in mm. terms of, yeah, it's but it's yeah, it's it's not exactly presenting us a lot new, is it? Well, I guess the problem is, Chris, is that with the delay, if you just was to sort of partition yourself at looking at what options you've got for delay it's mm. very very basic and mm. there's a million of them out there that have those basic features with yeah. the reverb it's very very basic there's a million of them out there with those basic features so and same with the, the um yeah. but i guess like, you know we we're kind of spoiled because we've got some yes. pretty funky modules yeah, like I, i've got the yeah, sea legs and <laughs> on this clouds show, and we've Yes, on this so in this show we have been rather spoiled because we're, we're a show all about technology. So yeah, we get to see the cream and the crop as well. So you know, I don't want to diss on no, no, you, but because it isn't complicated. You're enough. probably it's right. Just, it's probably someone's it's just, DSP project, and he's probably yeah, made a, a panel for it. Yeah, and you know, I mm. always encourage people to have you know, masses of CV and yeah. stuff like that because it's where some of the interesting batching lies. So. But someone might like this. They might think, okay, this is yeah, kind of for exactly. me. I yeah. like the way this works. I, I kind of feel that my workflow works this way. Exactly. Yeah. As I said, I, I can, I can, I, it almost feels like a resistance to what I said before about the current trend in multi effects, which is, you know, FX1 param, FX2 param, FX3 mm. param. What is that today? <laughs> yeah. I do suffer a bit from that myself as well on some of our multi effects. I wish there was a new a lot effect. Of power, but, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind <laughs> of getting sick of the effects. <laughs> There needs to be a oh, new the, one. The, Invent yes, a new one. Something. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's cool. There's, There's reverb, reverb, delay, chorus, flanger. Yeah. You know, it, it's you know, distortion. <laughs> let's you know, let's get a let's have a new one. Bit crusher. You know, there's there's only so maybe many. There is. Maybe, maybe there, there is. is a new effect. It's called Buchler. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's called not using effect. <laughs> She's like, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> um, I think that I have, is, to, I have it, to say. It. I have tried the Buchler since more than one occasion, and I can't get a decent melody out of them either. <laughs> mm. I'm not. I'm not going to comment <laughs> no. because. Okay, I'll, I'll say this. I would say this: if you take away the keyboard, right, and you mm. take away all of your training in music that has been surrounded by the the notion of a piano keyboard, okay. Look, they have no training. If you take away that, and then you start using a Buchla with with that clear thought in mind, and please yeah. don't let your brain snap back to that piano keyboard mentality, exactly. you yeah. should find the Buchla a little bit more inspirational. That would be my I, I mean, I, advice. I would love to spend a lot of time with it. I'd love to really get my head around it. Cause, uh, was it Susan Susan Ciani absolutely loved it back in the day? Yeah. yeah. Now we no. can't so we can't I leave uh, Andy up there. By the way, he's just gonna it's gonna look silly <laughs> with him. We'll just do that yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, anyway, that a couple was of the... times that I've sorry, go. I was just gonna say the couple of times at shows, it's been I've I've started to mess around with it and think I'm going absolutely nowhere with this. Really, I don't understand what I'm doing, but that's not that's not unusual. You know, I'm quite happy to not understand say, what I'm doing. Sometimes. I'm about that, I, I walk as soon yeah. as I walk sometimes in the studio. I think that. <laughs> it's fun so, sometimes. So, guys in the chat, what's your problem? You've got problems with the volume levels. What's wrong with the volume levels? Mm. God, they're picky today. Are uh, there streaming tools mm. to, with the volume levelers? Uh, there are. What's wrong? Okay. What, what's wrong with the volume? Who's quiet? Who's too loud? Who's too, Who's loud? too quiet? Or someone too quiet? Who's Could just be me. right? Let us know. 
We'll try and fix it for Just you. Us. We'll, we'll try Everybody's and fix fine. it. I don't think it's. I don't think it's out. I mean, it's it's hard to get this stuff perfect um, because yeah. we're not. A f- I'm the loudest, and Darren is very low. Would I mean Darren probably just needs I'm to low. get closer to his mic? Oh, the mic's miles away. That's I'm low. Are you saying I'm low then? It doesn't look low to me. I can see all the VU. Is that better? Yeah. Low, yeah. yeah. Is that better? Mm. Bass room yeah, so- software. Somebody breathes. <sighs> they make like a pop filter. Shh. Pop filter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is my volume's better now? God, you guys are picky. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, I'll watch that if I'm if I'm the one blowing my microphone because I do tend to. I do have a fan on. Thanks, Brett. I'm Guys, sure. I don't know if you remember, but I do live in <laughs> Perth in Australia, and yeah. it, it's like thirty degrees just about every single day of the year, including night time. I have a fan on. If I didn't have a fan on, I would have literally sweat running down I can't, my shirt. I can't hear you, fun. I do have a um a noise gate on on my you know so you, you can't hear it but it might stumps it might come through when i talk slightly you might hear some oscillating sounds but yeah um i, I kind of don't really feel like I, I watch my show back i kind of feel like you we've we haven't touched any of the volume controls on anyone uh for ages and i kind of feel like um sometimes people lean back and I, obviously if you lean back yeah, it's yeah. going to be quieter Sometimes leaping, you can't have control over that. And sometimes people like, like Andy before he was walking through the hotel and he was breathing yeah. into the microphone while he was walking because he's like walking. Uh, so I muted him for a couple of seconds while I noticed that. So this, we do whatever we can do. Um, it's my volumes better. So David's saying it's like this every week. So there is a bassy sound. I think it's that fan. Okay, well there you go. I'm not going to turn my fan off. So. Um, <laughs> live with it that's all i can say yeah, all yeah. right speaking of living with it we need to live with some prices hey. right this one's have come in from uh andy synthetic who's now left uh and he did he does know about these anyway so there's no point in worrying about if he's here or not but i'm going to add who can i add down the bottom Darren. Where's Darren gone? There you go. Darren, you can you can join us in the bottom. Um, this one is the Mini Moog with actual David Bowie Ziggy one with the original case and Providence nineteen mm-hmm. seventies dark wood. Um twenty nine thousand bucks, twenty or thirty thousand bucks. I would love to know if this is real like rigid edge mm-hmm. or not, because oh, uh how do we know how do we know oh did that not come through um i thought i put these in here the links price watch i did why is that not showing in oh i've got to sign in okay sorry i've got a spreadsheet here that i click on to get these links up here we go so reverb the reverb listings uh, we'll do that one and then we'll do the one that we just needed right then. How come it was the other way around? I don't know. Okay, here we go. So this is the reverb listing. So 29,000 US is about 48,000 Aussie, according to the reverb calculator. Let's have a look at some photos. Looks <laughs> pretty beat up, which you'd yeah. expect for a 1970 synth. Exactly, yeah. Just because it's got David Bowie posters in the background doesn't necessarily mean it really is yeah. his. Yeah, I know. But it could be. Mm. It could be. Let's read what it says underneath. Just serviced a fully working one of two Mini Moogs in the original 70s wooden case that toured on the Ziggy Stardust tour around the world up until Hammersmith in 73. Comes with provenance information and one of Ziggy's back cloths with the red zigzag well there you go maybe it does hmm. um yeah so if that's 
a pretty decent thing to do then get that I guess yeah <clears throat> you'd want to know how he came by it wouldn't you that's the first question you'd ask it, you want to have some sort of uh, mm. certificate of authenticity I think if you're paying that sort of money you'd have to get God, yeah. yeah one of those um like clearing houses that do that sort of stuff for you. Yeah, I was going to say, it feels feels much better if it would be coming from an auction in Christie's or something. And, and you'd then think, I trust the problem is. Chris, you'd think they would say something about that on the listing, right? Yeah. Anyway, so that's mm. that one. Um, now, does the next one work? Hey, the next one is the oh, Jamox yes. Sunsin Mark One. Um, it is pretty rare this thing. So this is about thirty four thousand US or fifty two thousand Australian, somewhere around there. Um and it is on reverb. So what can we show you about this? There is a, actually a certificate here, I'll show you this. <laughs> the trusted reverb seller, that's certificate. Um there you go. Sunsin. We've shown a Sunsin before. Hmm. I I sent something the other day um, to someone and he got really shitty with me actually. No. Um I put I sent I sold my Waldorf I think it was my Waldorf rocket. And I what I did is I I boxed everything up with all the original packaging and inside the Waldorf packaging is like polystyrene sort of squash foam, right? And the thing does not move inside the box at all. And then I wrapped the box with um, black, black sealing plastic. So, because you know, if it gets sent mm -hmm. overseas, mm. um, the plastic's okay. going to protect the outside of the box. But he reckons that the couriers completely butchered the box. Really? And I said, So, is there anything wrong with the synthesizer? He said, No, the synthesizer's working fine. But he was a bit peeved about the box. So, what, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to <laughs> bubble wrap the box now? Exactly. Or you're saying, are they saying, you know, you, yeah, you made you your box the, look too you attractive the, to be damaged. Um, you put your box in a wooden box. Do you know how much? Well, that that box. Do you know how I much that adds to postage boxes. from Australia? So the thing is, yeah. like this box, with all of its, you know, it's a polystyrene bits and pieces and cables and stuff in there, and the measurements, it made the postage, you know, still about eighty bucks to send it overseas, Australian. Um, and then if I was to put that box in another box just to protect that box, <laughs> it would have doubled the price. Yeah, the but then you need to protect yeah. the box that it's in. So that's yeah. another box <laughs> on the box that's in the box. Oh, it's like Ace Ventura. He's probably just kicked it down the street. Um, I certainly used, yeah, to, used to double box guitars if I sold a guitar. Mm, yeah. I mean, if, I, if, no. he, if he's willing to pay for the postage... Then yeah, I'll exactly. do it, but no one ever messages you at, when you buy something no. and go, "Oh, by the way, I'll double give you an extra it. twenty bucks if you exactly. double box it for me." I'm like, yeah. Yeah. you know, if that's important to you, you must tell me. It's always after the fact that it's important to them, isn't it? I mean, it's it's yeah, yeah. I know it's only it's one like, person that's ever done it, something. so it's probably a, it's yeah, probably a small exactly. thing. Yeah, it's it's not even clear what he meant because, like, was he saying that the. the that something about the way you put the tape around the outside attracted people to throwing it around? I don't know, it's a bit weird. No, you just said it was the box was butchered, but I, I use like a plastic coating that goes around. Yeah. yeah. Um it's it's like yeah, shrink yeah. it's like a shrink wrap. Stink and, shrink wrap, yeah. Yeah. I do too. And it um and I, and then I, you know, put packing tape around that. So it's literally you could you could drop it in water, it would it would float. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's watertight. Yeah. That's why I do it because it's going all over the world, and you just don't want those couriers are just taking them out of their vans, and it could be pissing down it's, with rain, and you yeah, don't want the box to get wet. It's it's weather and heat, kind of you have to protect against, I guess. And most of our most of the gear we deal with that don't <laughs> care about heat. <laughs> Neil reckons I should hand deliver, them. <laughs> mate. If someone wants yeah, to pay absolutely. the flights, I would love to do that. That would be awesome. I'd love to yeah, rocking her up up to someone's front door and go, hey. Here's your synth. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the flight. <laughs> well, I'm here. I might do a bit of sightseeing. <laughs> I mean, I've sold stuff all over the world. It's pretty cool where I've sold stuff. Germany and 
Romania and like Russia. That's heaps of play, cool places I've sold stuff. Definitely. Uh, one guy in Argentina bought something. That I literally have a world tour. How, how would you like a service that you know it takes a, like a, um, a a photograph whenever the person receives it? You know, handing out like when you get a one of those novel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> you know, you go, so every person who receives a piece of gear, you feel, oh. You I um. Okay. The other thing I could do is if you buy something off me on That'd Reverb, nice. I could do I could do what they they used we used when I used to be in the Air Force, we used to do these things. We'd steal garden gnomes from people's front gardens. And then we take them <laughs> all over the world and take Polaroids oh, <laughs> off the garden like home and post them back yeah. to them in the mail. Oh, no. <laughs> I can do a, that with your with, synth. With, with a postcard? Here's me in Paris next to the Eiffel Tower <laughs> exactly, with your synth. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you may have noticed. This is Ramsey's version of tracking. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Uh what was me? The garden gnome thief? Yes, it was me. Blame me. No, I actually didn't do it, but I was working with the guys that did, and it was a very, very, very funny thing in the in the eighties and nineties when we did in the eighties and nineties when we did it. These days, you'd probably yeah, yeah. get you'd probably have to go and talk to the men in blue. Mm. People don't have that quite a sense. We did of a similar sort days. of thing with a, with a, a stuffed canoe. <laughs> which uh, I I had in my when I this, this is back in the nineties. Uh, I had it in my demonstration room, sat in a corner, and I, it was tied with a blindfold on. And I took a picture and sent it to the owner. He didn't know where it was, and then it was it was passed on to somebody else, and they took a picture. And it went it went all over the place. <laughs> Beautiful. Um. Okay. So last week I asked uh, you guys if you wanted to send some music in. Oh, and, God, I never uh, sent you some stuff, and I, and I didn't. Yeah. Well, there was one person who did, and he's got his hand on his face right now. <laughs> uh, good old. I knew um, this would happen. I'm the only one who finally did it. <laughs> yeah. Life's a bitch, and then you marry one. No. Uh, um, okay, so, Chris, do you, want, do, you want me to show you, do you want me to show you this one, or? Sure. Sure? It's fine. Yeah. Gone through okay. The angst of deciding whether to put it up. Okay, Just let me find it first. Sorry, talk amongst yourselves, people. <laughs> there it is. And oh, it's on Dropbox. Okay, cool. Oh, so you haven't listened to it yet either? Oh yeah, oh, I just I I just forgot that it was on Dropbox, and I ah, okay. I listened to it on Dropbox. Now I've downloaded it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, what we'll do is I will copy that across to the other computer so that we can actually play it on the other computer. That might actually help. Okay, cool. Now, because this, there's no video with this, you'll just have a look at us sort of making funny faces while we're listening <laughs> I, to it. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I did think about possibly making just at least a simple visualizer. I thought, well, let's keep um, it organ on the show. But what I will do... No, we do awkward well. So. What I will do is I'll mute all the... Uh, all the the mic inputs, so you guys can just <laughs> yeah. hear the audio. Okay, so so we can say anything now. So they can't complain about <laughs> noises in the background or whatever. God, God help me. Uh, here we go. All right, here we go. I am going to play it. Um, do you want to give it a quick uh, intro. intro? Yeah. Over this to you, Chris. Latest, this is the latest track I'm working on. It started off as a modular jam, um, and after I did the modular jam, I said. I must put this up on my YouTube channel, so I dropped it into my video editor and went, ah, oh, the um, video is not very interesting, I wonder if I could add some other ideas to it. But actually, that would be a really cool idea, I might just start, and that's when the time disappeared and I actually ended up turning it into a multiple layered song. So it's instead of just being the modular jam, it's now the modular jam with a whole lot of layers of other stuff on it. So this is how it came out. Well, it's the okay. first minute of it. Here we go. <laughs> Is it going to play or what? <laughs> Not that. Come on. One second, one second, one second. <laughs> it's opened it with iTunes. I don't know why. Uh, there we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ah, oh, dearie me. <laughs> that one was. I was like, how do I get rid of that? <laughs> it was like there was something in the background that just started playing automatically. I don't know why. Yeah. So, sorry about that. By the way, if you're wondering what that was, that was Australian <laughs> cruel. <laughs> this list was Australian. <laughs> um, about that. The music before that, though, was what we actually were listening to, and that was Chris's. Um, and I thought it was pretty good. Um, I it's did great. listen to it. Listen yeah. to it the other day, and I kind of got vibes of craft work, and um, I got vibes of you know all the different sort of synth influences. Speak and spell was, it, was that was that sampled, or did you have a speak and spelly type? Um... They were based on samples. A lot of editing of samples. I don't have a um, an, a, one that like a circuit bench uh, emulation of a speak and spell that will say yeah. whatever I wanted to say. I had to actually build it out of a few phrases yeah. that were there and other phonemes and all that kind of stuff, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I was always trying to get hold of um, a, a, an actual circuit yeah. bent one that I could do that with. Yeah, but I suppose another will wear off after it because there's only so much you can do with speaking <laughs> spell for a while. Exactly. I mean, I've got the Thomas the, Tom, <laughs> the Th Tham Thomas Thomas the Tank Engine version, but you're right. I mean, I've done one track with it, and I probably won't do anything else with it because yeah. it is quite limiting. Doing that oh, sort yeah. of thing, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I've, but I've, I've never. Really liked it. I've always. Oh, cheers, in. I've um, I've wanted to use a speak and spell on some track, and I've and been waiting yeah. until I found something that worked, and this just sort of fell into place. So it's probably going to be yeah. the track that gets the speak and spell, but I won't necessarily yeah. use that effect again. Um, there are other things you can use. Mm. There are. You don't always have to have voices too. Just this one. Sort of went that way. It was actually because of the free sounds. Um, so a lot of those samples, uh, the telephonic samples, were sort of freesound.org samples that I picked up, and it was just playing yeah. with them that kind of made the whole idea come to life. And that's when I went, "Oh, I need the speak and spell on this," and he's going to say this. So yeah, it just kind of popped into my head. So I went with it. Oh, that's good fun. Well. And this is this is a complete off the wall one actually. You just remind me, but we're doing speaking spell and then um, uh, found sounds. I did get something new. Ooh. By the way, before I say anything, uh, Chris, I liked yeah. the track actually. I definitely like that. Oh, I, cool. I like that rumbling, ba uh, that bubbly bass. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, that's, yeah, I that's liked it. really I liked it. that's the modular. Yeah. I'm get I'm getting a few glitching. It's it's glitching, so I, I don't think it's at your end. I think it's my end. That was all. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, I got one of these runs. I've been. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh the H6. Right, okay. H6. Nice. Well, they've, brought the H, they've brought the H6 Essential out now, haven't they? So it's yeah. made the H6 go cheaper. So uh, I've always had, I've always wanted to get one for when I'm out and about just recording yeah. stuff. So uh, I, yeah, I just yeah. got one. So that was my purchase, yes. I did actually buy something. Nice. Hopefully they don't um, put that same rubberized it, paint on it that they had in mind. No, nope. <laughs> it's all plastic now. There's no there's no rubber paint on it, so it's perfectly plastic. Mm. So I'll get no rubbery, rubbery yes. uh, stickiness. Mm. Yeah, mine's all sound, sticky. It probably uh, feels of, a bit... Yeah. I was going to say, Foley is a big part of your 
music these days, isn't it? You use quite it a bit can of be, yeah. It can be, mm. yeah. I do, I do like to. I mean, sometimes you can never tell that it's Foley because I've uh, turned it into exactly. other things. But oh, that's yeah, half the fun. Isn't Foley. It? That's, well, yeah, like that's what I spend half half time doing. Yeah, yeah. It starts out of a true Foley sound, and it's like dead obvious. Mm. And then by the time it's finished, it's uh, you think, yeah. well, you might have just got a synth out of that in the end because you'll never know that it was a Foley sound to start with. But yeah, it's just exactly. gets you going, all right, like messing about. Yeah, that. but yeah, yeah. Um, opens the creative juices. Get some going. Exactly. Yes. The the only thing. Oh, yeah, and thumbs yeah. up for your track, Darren. Anyway. By the way, the only thing I yeah. would mention about the H six, which I was I was, when I bought it, I thought, ah, why did you guys put the screen down the bottom? Um, <laughs> yeah. Because like, if you ever mount this thing, um, and you want to use the microphone, uh, which is at the other end, you can't actually see anything on the screen. It's kind of useless. Uh, so the only time you can see the screen is when you've got it like you're looking at it on the desk or you're looking at it up vertical upright and i thought okay if you guys ever make another one of these put the screen at the other end put it up near where the where the actual microphone is yeah. and i've just noticed that they've just yeah. put it in exactly the same hey. place exactly <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always been oh, obvious I just see, I, isn't it mm. I, I, yeah, I have the h2 but, sure. uh, I, can't. I, I was just saying i opened an don't you go down but since they dropped the uh, price to the H6, I, I only need it to record, you know, just yeah, random stuff. It didn't have to be. I may move to the uh, to the essential eventually if I really really enjoy it. So it was cheap enough at the time. I only had that much money. Go on in. I was just say because I had the H2, which is really old now. Uh, didn't have the ruler, the, the stickiness problem. Uh, the screen was near the microphones. On the H two, uh, and I'm I'm almost sort of waiting for it to die so I can buy a new newer version. I have the H four was as well, wasn't it? Ian? Hang on, guys. I had, I need uh, to get. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it was. I actually didn't realise that. I think David's actually waiting in Zoom, so oh. we're going to put him in. So we're going to put him in the top right hand corner. Did that work? No, that worked. Yay! Now I just That's need right. to. I, I need, it. To, need to fix that. Hey, everybody, oh, yeah. keep, keep the conversation going. I can win. <laughs> I might move you over a little I, bit I like think, that. I think, I think He's moved into my studio. I mean, <laughs> yes, yeah. There we go. Yeah, I've, ne I've never had one, you see. I've always recorded. I've either managed to find the samples I wanted um, and have to adjust them, or I've used this mic in here and brought some stuff into yeah. it. But if I want to go out and about, which I usually do. Um, I never had anything with me, and I always thought I'll buy one, but it was about 250, 260 quid at the time. It might have even been more mm. than that um, until they brought this new one out, and I thought oh, it's under 200 quid now. So, ah, go on, I'll, I'll, fact, I'll, I'll go for it. I mm. think I've used the H2 on every album that I've put out. If I think about it, yeah, I, I mean, when I went down the coal, the coal mine, that's what I took with me to record the the. the Mine shaft and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Well, that, a lot that's of nothing. Really Plus, fun. I like people thinking, "What the heck you're doing?" A lot, mm. Darren. A lot of my earlier YouTube videos that I did, probably like 2016, 17, somewhere around there, I did with the H6. So I used to, I used to sit there with all my synth gear in front of me, and the camera's pointing down, and I would record separately and do the whole clap thing to synchronize with the video and the audio. And I used the H6, that's, and the reason why that, I did it is because it actually was a really, it had a really nice uh, vocal, you know. Well, well, that that's another reason is because I can record anything I do live, you know, rather than having to have Ableton, which I think is where I was getting me a uh, glitch from yeah. actually, because it's getting old and yeah. needs to re-update. Um, and also, there's a, a sort of a bigger reason as well because the Purple Ones album has a secret <laughs> track at the end usually. <laughs> and for what I need, for what I need to do, I needed some sort of recording outside. You will have to wait for the album to come out, but it's going to be interesting. Mm. Mm. I mean, I I originally bought the H two because I saw a video of a, and it was a, a film production company, and the guy doing the sound used it as a boom mic. He basically stuck it on the end of a, you know, and he recorded the audio for this uh, for this film. Using a H two, 
you know. Oh, cool. I thought, well, if it's good enough for them guys, it's good enough for what yeah. I want to do. Oh, they're <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, they're they really have, good. They've just got better over time. Yeah. You know. I mean, awesome. How are you going, David? David? Hey, man. Have I got your audio on? Can you hear me okay? Oh, yes, we can hear you fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> I'll do good. Yeah. Well, speaking of Zoom, you can see the live track right here. And, um, wow, I love that thing. I really love it. I used to use the R8. I've used a lot of Zoom yeah. stuff. I'm a big fan. Mm -hmm. Their, uh, yeah. their effects and their, uh, their um, recorders. Yeah. Do you, do you think the, the live track is good for a podcast? Do you think? I had a guy ask me that the other day. I, and think, I, said, I said it was. I think the L8, is it the L8? One yeah, of the, the smaller LA. ones is, yeah. is more designed for podcasts and apparently works real well. The L12 and the bigger ones are more for Studio. this, you know, yeah. or live, you know, live recording. So yeah. You get 2448. The big thing they did with the live tracks was that you could use the effects and go up to 48 versus 44. So um, that was a nice change. Before, you had to compromise. So, um, yeah, they're great. They're great. They're um, um, super useful, that's for sure. Awesome, well, man. I, I have the Zoom um, rack mounted. Uh, what is it? The Zoom Studio 12, 1204 effects back from the 90s i think yeah uh, and that's 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 decent yeah i used to have a, a zoom zoom tack 8 which i actually thought was brilliant uh the only thing i got rid of it was it didn't work with the m1 mac it was fine before that uh, i don't know if they ever updated it but i waited and waited and ended up having to buy something else but that was really really good mm. you know yeah, I don't use this one as an interface. Um, I just record straight onto it and just grab the stems on a little SD card mm. and just throw them on the computer or iPad. Um, but it, it's a nice quality to it. And I think the effects, I'm guessing the effects in that little, um, you know, the little uh, pedal everybody has. Um, I'm the assuming the these 70, are the same. Yeah. yeah, I'm assuming these are the same. They're, they're, mm. Maybe not exceptional, but very usable. Mm. You know, yeah, so. that's kind of what the seventies like. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would say the same thing, Dave. I'd say that. Yeah, they're not exceptional, but they they're passable for a lot of situations. Function. Um, Especially if it's like delays, like digital yeah. delays and stuff. Yeah. Ping pongs, great, absolutely yeah. fabulous. Yeah. So. Awesome. Um. So let's 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 circle back um to doing your own music and and that's what chris did uh and chris by the way i should mention that chris's track is still in development and and he was yeah. kind of he was worried about playing it live and showing the world because he hasn't he reckons he hasn't finished it yet and, and, mm. and but the thing is if you're ready if, <laughs> even if you're considering music, that yeah. you're ready to, sh to to for other people to listen to it it means it's yeah. it's okay for us and yeah. and that's what i'm saying so and i actually i didn't really notice uh, I mean, I don't know what you've got planned for it, mate. So we haven't had that discussion. But I didn't really notice anything Some. in there that you, I thought, oh, it's missing. Missing, yeah. No, it's know. polish. No, it's, it's a just, dancing it's girl section. You can never say it's just missing polish. anyway, because you can never say anything's missing or wrong because you don't know what the artist no, no. was intending. No, exactly. No, no. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Which is a good uh, thing for me because a lot of things are missing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, but, it's, yeah, it is. But like it's, that, so, it? so guys, like, so last week we talked about this, right? And we were talking about how I, I'm, you know, I'm just really just sort of trying to encourage you, not you guys here necessarily. This is you, as in everyone that's watching, uh, even on the it replay. It's me, Matt. Um, I'm just trying to encourage you guys to sort of record more and and then get it back out there. Don't just let it sit on a hard drive and yeah. no one gets to hear it. Share it with people because feedback um whether it's constructive and and uh you know wh whether you don't like feedback or not it's up <laughs> i i still think it's actually kind of interesting like i think some of the first times i used to share my music with people pe people used to tell me things like oh it sounds like and they'd rattle off a few band names yeah. that they they recognized with it and it probably does to them it, it didn't probably doesn't to me and it yeah. probably doesn't mm. to you but that's what it sounds exactly. like to them and in a way, it shows that they've connected with it in that way. And I kind of always, 
at first I kind of when I when I heard that I kind of didn't really know how to handle that but as you know for years you've been doing it you kind of realize that this is their way that they're connecting with it that's cool and then you can find something like oh okay yeah I didn't really not realize that I sounded like them but they are really cool I, I dig their work you know and you kind of then connect with them on that level and that's a cool thing and then before you know it they end up becoming you know in, they enjoy listening to your music because they feel like you've just allowed them to connect at their their way you know, let them connect organically their way. Um, sort of, if you if you have yeah. a sort of awkward Natural. response to that, it, that that's yeah, basically you're burning them. If that makes yes, sense, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be very sort of, you know, just listen and don't think too much. Yeah. Kind of record it and just process it later. If you, if you it's, need to. it's it's funny actually, but I I have a couple of friends who I whose opinion I trust implicitly. And and, and I, I, what I don't want is I don't want to, to, to somebody just say, oh, that's great, you know, mm. because that's not very helpful. <laughs> no. You know, I mean, and it's lovely when people do say it's great and, you know, mm. but the reality, because your track was great, Chris. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But, I've got so much work but, to do. Absolutely wonderful. No. <laughs> Whenever Ian says it was, your track's great, you're yeah, screwed. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be remastered. That, you know, you I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think, I, I'm, yeah, I'm I think Chris's good track at, was interesting, you know, it was interesting. Um, oh, there, you know, if you can get something interesting or compelling going, you know, um, that you kind of keep coming back to and go, hey, I, like, I like that movement, you know, I think that's mm -hmm. enough, you know, and then, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I, I, a lot of times I, when, we overdo when it, it, right? We, yeah. Sorry. When it's finished, give me a copy and I'll definitely put it on the radio show because I thought it was great. Mm. And you know, Thanks, I want to hear the finished version. Seriously, no, that's I do, great. You know, yeah, no, uh, I but I have a couple of that. mates who actually uh, whose stuff, and I don't do it that often. But it's usually if I get stuck with a, a track that I, I'm, you know, mm. that I'm, yeah. still think that, you know, if I get if I'm stuck with it, there's a couple of things I do. One is I might just leave it and come back to it. Yeah, I can sometimes leave it for months. Or I have a couple of friends, and I would I send it to one of them, and just and they would give me a genuinely honest opinion, and we do the same. They do they send something to me, you know, uh, and you know, yeah, you, you tell them what you think about it, you know, and that can be quite hard sometimes, you know, mm. uh, but you do need people sometimes to, that will do that for you, you know, and it's hard for them because they're your mates. And they don't just want to say it's great. They want to tell you what, you re what, what they really think or what they think's wrong with it, you know. And you can always disregard what they say, but, you know, it's quite nice to sometimes get that other opinion. You know, like I say, I don't do it a lot, but I, I do have a couple of people in particular that I would send stuff to mm. and have to, mm. you know. I think I talked about last week where I said I used SoundCloud before. Um, you know, for many mm. years I used SoundCloud. And then I used to put my stuff up there and... I had a few, you know, a few thousand people follow me on SoundCloud and you'd get, regularly you'd get probably, you know, maybe three or four people comment on a track when you put it up there because that's what SoundCloud does. You kind of, as it plays, yeah, yeah. if you start commenting, it kind of timestamps where that comment appears. Yeah. Or they go, oh, I like that part or something like that. Um, and I kind of, I, I liked it, but then what ended up happening is I found I didn't really want to release stuff on SoundCloud and then find out later that I wanted to put it on as a commercial release mm. and then everyone's already heard it. So I thought mm. you've got to make that sort of that balance where if I'm going to put something on SoundCloud or one of those freer sort of places where you public publicly share your music, it's going to be something that I'm not going to commercially release or it's not going to be something anywhere yeah. nearly related to it. I don't want to give away any secrets or anything like that. Well, I, have a, I have a constant mm, running yeah, issue with that dilemma. because I... Mm. I I, I try and put out a track every two weeks um, and trying to keep it away from other stuff that I'm doing and like say writing for live I try to so sometimes I get a little bit crossed but uh, I usually end up either remixing the track that's gone out on YouTube so it's not the same or mm. just come up, like tomorrow's track that I'm trying to come up with now I've not even started it yet I think I've got the first 10 seconds and it's like I've not put out one for a week and I always say I've got to put out one at least every two weeks and I'm like mm. so after this show I'll do a little bit and then tomorrow morning I'll be doing it so it'll be basically whatever comes out tomorrow morning will be what I'll be in the afternoon and it's like a, it becomes a constant uh, so everything I put out on YouTube is never really fully finished I mean there's the odd mm. one that 
mm. that's been in the train for a while but i thought i'd get chance to come back to write you know to um improve the track because it needs to go out which i've got myself locked into mm. my fault i get myself locked into doing this but in a way it's good because uh, i get ideas from yeah. quickly running and one out for the sunday and you're, then you're kind of exercising a muscle there aren't you kind of exercising yeah the otherwise if i stopped doing it i'd get completely brain locked Exactly. Yeah. I was just ch I was checking out the chat, and there was a few few guys in the chat were sort of commenting on this as we were talking. And George mentioned that um, you can spend a long time mucking around on recordings, and you have to remember mm. that no one has heard them yet. Um, so that could be. I kind of feel that that could be kind of the thing that I was trying to hone in on last week. It's like you might have spent ages on these recordings and no one has heard them yet why is that like you've put a lot of labor of love into that why has no one heard yeah. them yet um is it because you're not happy with it or is it because you're you've got a fear it's not finished well, oh, it's not not fin finished is the wrong word it's, it's, yeah yeah musicians it's not never finished it's not <laughs> yeah you know, not ready completely. in my head it's yeah. in it's my not head, ready it's about yeah. it's not ready to be released because yeah. yeah. a track is never finished yeah you know mm -hmm. i mean I, I, I don't like to go back and and sort of rehash something that that I did quite a while ago. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. re, I, you know, I don't do remixes of my own stuff. If other people want to do remixes, that's cool. You know, I'd give them the stems and, and let them turn something else into it. Uh, but I, you know, I, I for do, me, see, I it, have remixed my own stuff, and sometimes right. it's, for, it's for the better. A lot of quite a few mm. things I've remixed. Um, I've put uh, like God's Path. I think there's three remixes because originally I written it three years ago, put it out on YouTube, liked it to a degree, wasn't finished, came back to it, obviously found the project and then stripped it back uh, and then completely re revamped it into a new a new version. It was a live version that was going on YouTube mm. not so long ago. So yeah, I'm, I occasionally remix some of my stuff. The, the only time I did it was when I was in the, in Kate and the Questions, the pop group, uh, and I'd, I, I wanted to put one of the tracks on an EP but I didn't want to put the, the finished version on, so I did a remix then. That's the only time I've ever done it. So they got a remix version as a track on an EP, but then when the album actually came out mm. a year later, it had the, the the finished version, if you like, or the original version. Well, this could, this, could also, Ian, this could also be a different way because when I say remix, sometimes it's like I've written a track, I've put it out, mm. and then I've been, I've, been, I've been looking for, you know, I've been stuck uh, in a sort of writer's block type thing. And I've used the melody from a track and rewritten a whole one, so nah. it's sort of still a remix, but it's not. It's a new track, but it's using yeah. a melody from. It's an it's a, a starting track, point so. or an inspiration, a seed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a melody. Like yeah. Well, how do you think the people in uh, in Finland feel when they have to finish something? Anyway, we're going to go Yay! across to. Um, oh. These are the jokes, folks. We're going to go across to Where, another. Where's a little segue here because Kent asked me a question at the start of the show before everyone jumped on and he said he said to me he goes how do I get Jam Tabba to work I can't seem to get Jam Tabba to work and I'm kind of thinking um, maybe we should like tutorial get it up get it up and running tutorial. and uh, if there's anything in there that you want to ask about while I'm doing it and setting up well I've just made myself bleed I don't know why that happened um, okay so Head on over to the Mac, which is this button here, and I have Ableton Live running. This is Ableton 12, if anyone is wanting to know what version of Ableton it is. It doesn't matter if you've got Ableton 9, 10, 11, uh, or 12, it should be okay. I, actually, maybe 9 might not work, I'm not sure actually about that. Anyway, so Jam Tabber is um, there, JG Jam Tabber. And so what I generally do, I'll just zoom in for you guys so you can see that. So Jamtabber is just a plugin there, and you would drag that. If you're using Ableton, I generally drag that onto the master bus. So I'm going to drag that um, onto the main over here, this one, right? So I'll drop it over there and I'll show you. So you could drop it over here onto main, and then it ends up. So when you click on main, it ends up being. So when you click on a different track, right? It's not showing, but you click it on main. Why do you put it on main? You put it on main because all the sounds that you're making out of your DAW go through your master, your main, okay? Your master out. So that's where I chuck it. Now, some people don't 
use it this way. Some people use the standalone version and don't actually have it running through their DAW. But I just find, as a kind of general rule of thumb, this is the easiest way to get this to work for two reasons. One is it's left fuffing about to get your uh, sounds going into Jamtabber. And two, it's less fuffing about to get it synchronized with Jantabber. So they're the kind of two main things that you want to get right. And that's going to make your life a hell of a lot easier, I feel, if you're doing it that way. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some kind of funky sort of setups. And I, and I kind of feel you're just setting yourself up for failure anyway. Um, I noticed that one of my mate on is on this particular channel here, Seb. So we'll probably join that one. And was entering a channel and then we're on a channel you can see everyone in there so uh, you can it'll start preparing you and listening and things like that you'll start hearing it soon uh, there we go so they're all, now it's all up and running so those guys are all jamming now live on the internet And I've got my green transmit light showing here, which means I'm transmitting. I kind of always thought that was a bit weird how it's green. Because record is usually red, right? But green for go, I guess. So there's that. So they, we can mute all these guys if we don't want to listen to them. Someone playing guitar over here somewhere. There. So they're all muted now, they can't, they don't know I've muted them. Um, this is all just personal to you, okay? Uh, if I started playing something through here, they'd hear it um, and, you know, away we go. So for me, that's kind of as simple as you can get it, okay? But the second part of it, I think, is part that a lot of people forget, and that's this bit down here with the sync with live. So if you've got a different DAW, it's going to be the same. But this part of it here where you're actually, see how this has got the, the BPI and that's the 16 steps. And you can you can just manually start playing whilst that thing clicks around and gets to this, the first step again. So you can start, bang, start playing now and you're, and you're in sync. But another thing you can do is click sync with live. And that will tell you, it'll, I'll just zoom out again. If you click on that, it'll tell you to press play and start on your transport to sync it with Jamtaba. So you click, you go OK and you just press play and now I'm synced. OK. I don't want to do that because those guys are going to get shitty with my Eurorack sounds going through with their beautiful guitar sounds and stuff. But you get the idea. So that should be why did it go to there? That should be enough, um, I feel, for you guys to get it going. Is that, like, Kent, is that going to, does that help you at all? Or do you, or do you have some other sort of issue that's stopping you? Because I've covered how you, how you connect, how you get the audio, how you sync, and then how you sync it with your DAW. Um... By the way, if you watch that last jam I did, which was a couple of weeks ago, mm. there was they were having sync issues in that jam. It was a good jam. There's no doubt about it. It sounded really good. Uh, it wasn't me that sounded good. It was all those other guys that sounded good. But um, yeah. Um, okay, cool. So I, I, what I would suggest with, with Kent guys is when if he's doing his uh, pub next time and he wants to chuck jam chabber in, and you guys are kind of around him. Just give him a bit of a hand with that. I don't know if he can screen share his computer and just you know give him a hand with any of that. Um, he's saying he needs to get a Mac to let me install first. Well, it works on Windows, doesn't it? If you've got a Windows PC, it works the same. You don't. Have, you don't. It doesn't have to be a Mac. Ableton yeah, he's Live. Got a Mac. He's got a Mac. He's got a studio. He's got a studio, but he's also got a PC as well, I think. But I need to. I, I still need to get Mac to let me install first. What does that mean then? I, think I read that's that wrong. To do with, it. I mean, the software. He's had issues with his studio, his Mac Studio. Ah. And I suspect the issues might be with that rather than just any Mac. Is that right, Ken? 
Yeah, Apple. Oh, the sense. Apple's for Mrs. Steve's yeah, question. I think, so. I think Jam Tarva is quite, probably doesn't have the certificate, right certificate. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that, old, that, that old chestnut. That's yeah. what I suspect. Oh, okay, so what, what gen, I mean, I've got the latest Mac OS mm. here. Okay. But what that generally means is that you need to go into your system preferences, right? Mm. And then you click on system settings, sorry. And then you click on the uh, privacy and security tab. And then it will have that, uh, if you scroll down, it will have, there's a there's an app that's tried to install. Do you want to give it permission? And you click yeah. on it mm. and it'll ask you for your password and then it yeah. finishes it off. That's generally sure. in that sort of privacy and security section. Yeah. Um, I don't remember Jam Tabbit asking me that mm. though. To be fair, I yeah. I don't think it did for me because it is just a VST in my case. Yeah, so he's got full drive access already. So yeah, it's probably less permissions for installing a VST than installing the native app though. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you're talking about the standalone. I, mm. I mean, I'm using the. Which one is this? Is it the VST? No, this is the audio unit. I'm using the audio unit. It doesn't have to be. I could use the VST. Is it VST? Oh no, I think I've just installed the audio unit version of it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> with the Mac, you can use audio units or VSTs. It's up to you. Um, yeah, I, I can't really see. If it's to do with Mac permissions, then that might be something that you might need to have someone have a glance at your computer while you're actually trying to install it and watch the steps. Rob, Robbie and Matt are going over at some point soon. So the uh, the A team of computer <laughs> repairs will be with them. Yes. Oh, good. Yes. Good, good, good. Old and new. <laughs> I mean, another thing you could do is we can, you know, we can do this. I don't know the time, Kent, but we could. We could do a um, a Zoom call and a screen share or something, um, and I can do it that way with you. Get it working, easy. Right, that's Jam Tabber. It's pretty cool. I mean, I, I don't use it enough. I should use it a lot more. I'm going to get rid of it now though, because I don't want to run it at the moment. <laughs> but um, running it as as standalone is probably the more elite way of using it to be fair mm. and that's probably i had a chat to uh seb who's the guy that i do a lot of jams with online seb Anel. yeah he's from the uh he's from the netherlands. netherlands um and he's got so he's got um i think it's reaper running a plugin which is a standalone plugin that you get with reaper so you don't actually have to run reaper by itself yeah and he's got jam chat tab running that plugin as a standalone and then Ableton can actually send its audio to that as a like an internal device on your computer and that way it doesn't interfere as a VST or an audio unit in Ableton and it can run as a standalone device and it controls all the synchronizations and that means that you can use other um, audio applications on your on your Mac at the same time so sounds a bit like rewire Rewire was yeah, it could have been rewire. rewire. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah. I've got I've got the information written down somewhere, so it might have I, been rewire. I remember when the in the early days of Ableton, people were like, "Yeah, yeah I use Ableton rewired into Cubase and all the because back then they were the biggest DAWs, and you know this little upstart Ableton." Mm. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> no, it was. I mean, it's I rewire. I used to muck around with rewire, and I used to and. Uh, uh, I mean, at the time, my 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 sort of go-to DAW was uh, Cakewalk. Mm -hmm. Before I started using you Ableton, had yeah. and it's I had cool. Cubase. So I had Cubase, I had Cakewalk, yeah, I didn't... and then Rewire. Yeah. I used to do. Was it uh, Rebirth? Didn't you have to rewire Rebirth? Rebirth was so cool. Yeah. I loved Rebirth. <laughs> and that was real acidy stuff in the in Rebirth. If if you yeah, yeah if. If you ever want to see any, if we ever want any nostalgia on your rebirth, just go back and look through some of the back catalogue of Look Mom No Computer videos and you find <laughs> a few places where he he gets some old PCs running rebirth again. And he actually <laughs> made a he actually made a live controller for rebirth. 
with pots, individual pots. It was like desk sized. <laughs> Check it out. I don't think I ever did. Sam, Sam's, got really, <laughs> Sam's got some really. Sam's got some really crazy videos. Yeah. He's he's pretty oh, cool, yeah. Sam. <laughs> no, he's great. Yeah. I've still got rebirth on my old Mac G3. I don't think it's been running for a few years though. <laughs> and uh, what else? There? Oh, and Tokyo Crystal Crystal Synth. Tokyo to- Tokyo. Okay, what was Tokyo Works or Tokyo something? Crystal. Crystal yeah. Synth. Crystal, yeah. I don't remember that. That's on... it's a, it's a Is that part of Rebirth? Was it? it? No, no, this was this, uh, just a just a DST. Yeah. Oh, okay. DSTI. I don't remember that one. Yeah crystal yeah it was one of the first so, oh my god you can get one of these things that do it does all this for free this is insane everyone wants to get one <laughs> there was there was this thing called uh seq sec toys or seq toys that um it had it was actually pretty the whatever it was the guy that programmed it he had this little random sequence generator and i used to use it all the time because it was so like you just hit random you hit the random button and it would just generate this really cool melodic sort of to a degree it wasn't like um euclidean or anything like that but it was kind of it was semi melodic to a degree and then you only had to sort of tweak your sequence a little bit and you got something very melodic but the randomized feature was just so cool you just go right bang start the computer up open up rebirth hit the seq toys hit the randomized button i've got a sequence going hey right let's let's get let's get making music it was that quick I loved it. Uh, and I think it's, uh, you can still get it, this uh, SEQ toys that's around, um, but it's just kind of old. Like you'd have to run it in Windows oh. XP mode or something on your Windows computer. Yeah. I know you can get Rebirth on the, on the iPad as an app. Yeah. Hmm. Of course, in, in Ableton 12 now, you can bring up the MIDI tools, randomize option. Can't yep. You? It's part of the new you can. 12 suite. Generate random mini data. Boom. You can. Um I haven't used it that that my army I've used it probably twice. I used it once to test it and then some guy messaged me said, "Oh, I've got a bug with this. Can you see if it happens with yours?" And I did it again and the bug appeared and I went, "Yeah, it happens with mine." So it's only two times I've used it and both of those times weren't really melodic. Yes. Yeah. They weren't really merely me doing music. Yes. You weren't in creative mode, you were in technical no. mode. I was in... Exactly. Don't bother me with your crap mode. <laughs> 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 oh, well, I'll check it just to dot the I's and cross the T's. Yes, yeah. it does it. <laughs> Move on. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I get... Huh. During the week, I probably get like a good two or three messages a day on my YouTube channel from people who oh. watch old videos that are like you know five six years old and they've got questions about stuff and I'm like wow ah, okay some of them are like I don't even have the gear anymore I'm like that like yeah, there was yeah, one I, I got asked that. the other day about a mixer that I only had literally given to me just to do a review and I, and I get so many questions about this mixer. I'm like guys there's like 400 comments of me saying I don't have the mixer anymore for the last seven years <laughs> Can I, I do? Guess, I guess we, us with YouTube channels, have got that to look forward to. <laughs> I mean, it's a, yeah. a ten-year-old video. I can have a I'm have good about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not rude to them, but it's it's kind of it gets frustrating because like you you yeah, you're sort yeah. of you did the video. You can't even remember doing the video. It's like it yeah. was like ancient, you know. And people still ask you questions about it. The other day, I, I did. Yeah. I got a question about me repairing the um, uh, ex. Um, EX800, the Korg, yeah. right? Um, and he asked me something really specific, and I'm like, I can't even remember. So I actually had mm. to go back and watch my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, after, yes. after that. Mm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> hey, Rans, I have a question for you. D- dead serious. <laughs> can you hear me? I can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in this. It, and uh, so that recent um, Behringer 182 sequencer you, uh, video you did, I guess relatively recent, and you had it running into a um, disting, I think, for the um, quantizer. Yeah. 
Is there a difference between doing that and running it into, because I think you've had this one too, the Clavis Caltrans, are they doing the same thing? I know it's kind of yeah. a weird question. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so they, because when I'm thinking about those, so you, the, the B182, and Chris would probably be good at this too, that's an analog module, right? Yeah. Um, so it can quantize a sequencer that's not a VCO. There's no difference, right? Is that true? So, so there's the one eight two with all the little, um, all the steps that you've got the little potentiometer mm -hmm. down each step. Yeah. There's actually no quantization on that. It's literally it's just volts mm -hmm. per octave, Voltage. as you can right. turn it. You know, from uh, I forget what it is, minus five to plus five or whatever it is the the range Zero on the thing. Five. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. W what that means is you can actually tune any step to any tuning that you like, mm. which is actually pretty powerful, and. Yeah. In Eurorack land, that might be a cool thing, especially if you've got like things like Buchler and stuff like that. But for yeah. for that video that I did, I put the quantizer in it because I wanted to, um, I wanted those notes to lock into a proper A440. Yeah. That's what training. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not calibrating it really. Or no, are you? no, no, no. no. I know that sounds. Is I know. Quantization. You still have to that tune your oscillators. Thing. Yeah. Exactly. You, yeah. you still have to tune your well, oscillators. Well, assuming they're digital. Assuming they're digital, like plats and... Well, no, and, uh, not those. Yeah, you, you'd be no, fine with them. No. But with mine, I had v, I had VCOs, so I had to tune them. So you set it. You set your quantizer to a C, and then you would tune it, and then you would look at the tuning, and it would be a C, and you'd be like, okay, we're good now. And that's it. You just don't touch it. As long as they're all warmed up like they, they're supposed yeah. to be. But with digital oscillators, you don't even have to worry about that. No. no. Yeah. So running that... Because that... That sequencer in particular, which I I got, so I could use Chris's GP82. But then I started, which I really liked the sequencer. But then I realized it was getting a little problematic trying to uh, tune it. You know, <laughs> like getting everything in tune. Yeah, yeah. Period. It's just, yeah, yeah. The you know, what I mean? so I saw you using. Yeah, it's actually still set not up. Essential. Yeah. It's still set up. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. Yes. I don't. I sort of like the Clavis one better. I think it's a little mm. more. Um, might be a little bit more kind of. Yeah, uh, Randy yeah, was talking uh, was, to me this week about the Clavis. So it was a good example to look at. It is. It's a great tuner. Yep. It's a great Definitely tuner. Um, yep. I used. I well, I bought it because I've got the the nifty keys, and I was doing that four voice, mm. yeah, you know, mm -hmm. analog thing, which was a cool little project, and uh, definitely no regrets. But. I've used the Clavis for other things since, and it's yeah. it's pretty handy. The only thing I don't like about it is the tuning routine. I think that could have been that could have been o done a bit optimized. better. Optimized. Yeah. yeah. Do you, have you tried the the Clavis tuning routine, the Caltrans tuning routine? It's kind of weird how it does it. So you have to set yeah, you have I to set have your it. oscillator to like the lowest C, and then you um, this is for you don't. You wouldn't do this for digital oscillators. This is only for analog ones, right? And then you run it through the tuning routine, and what it does is it goes and it tries to discover what. Um, I'm on the call. I'm on the call. <laughs> yeah. It it tries to discover what what notes the 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 oscillator can handle, right? From from mm -hmm. the Caltrans, and then it works out. Okay, I can handle this octave range. And then the algorithm sort of locks that in and goes right. It's it, it's these voltage that I can I can see. Yeah. So therefore, it uses a bit of math and says right at at you know one point one volt or one point oh one volt. Um, that's a four forty. But even though it's supposed to be one volt, you know what I mean? Like it's 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 doing it to based on what it's calibrated itself to. So it's it's clever, but it's kind of a bit quirky to use. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I. It was just weird. I was kind of driving myself crazy because I was thinking, well, what this was, these are used to calibrate VCOs, but I really just want to use it as a some sort of quantizer, technically. Yep. But and then you know you've got like things like marbles, and I was thinking, okay, well that's got some sort mm -hmm. of sequenced pitch. You know, maybe I can put <laughs> it's, just, it's it's modular stuff. You know, you almost have to like marbles is awesome. To try it. Does does yeah. some of the mutable instruments um, digital oscillators have internal quantizing that you can switch on? Because I know the 
the Dreadbox. Uh, what is it called? The high, hypo. Ridiculous. Can't remember what it Things is. Things like leaves get tricky, you know. But Platts doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's just I don't it's think just it a machine. Quite quite cool oscill- oscillators with actual quantizers on the front of them as an option is a pretty cool idea. And Rings, was Rings has a tuner. Rings has a tuning mm. option on it. Does it really? Yeah. yeah. I know it's just it gets, but when you're sometimes when you're used like I was trying to go right from the sequencer into Platts mm. and Rings, and um. Mm. It was a little maddening trying to get everything. <laughs> you trying to tune the bloody notes, yeah. I yeah. Can totally understand. Yeah, that. because yeah. you were you, you had it, like rings it gets, kind of being. It gets it's a, a a little tip if you do do it, even if you don't go through, even if you do go through a quantizer, I put a passive attenuator between the CV one or CV two output, and then it turns your your five octaves into like two or three octaves, and then it means the pot doesn't have as dramatic effect. And so it's not as tricky mm. to, and it doesn't oh, jump okay. around as like much the as original one eight two had. Exactly, yeah. So the original yeah, one eight two that down. Roland made actually had uh, had a three position switch, and it enabled you to do like short, small, medium, and large tuning range yeah, ranges. Yeah. Which I th- yeah. I thought Beringer should have put that on there. Yeah, and I really thought that was an anomaly. But they didn't do it on the one yeah. too, which is a pity. They had space for it. Tiny little switches would it would have killed them. Yeah, and the nine sixty is kind of weird how how they've I mean they've probably just followed the Moog uh, yeah. nomenclature, but um it's like X one X two X four or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's multiplier. Well, it's, yeah. oh, it's because it it's directly the op amp multiplication. Mathematical uh, okay. I've always wanted because it doesn't. Circuit. To, to my bombish. mind, it doesn't work out like that, right? Because you're thinking, no, hang on a minute. No, no. What times one? What? Exactly. <laughs> times yeah, times, times two what? times four. What? It's it's times one of an internal circuit's voltage range <laughs> based upon the transistors yeah. used by Bob at the time, because they were what was available. And next week he was getting a different set of transistors, and the module would be, you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's the it's that era of you know modular development i i was thinking about this during the week right actually i'm glad you brought that up chris i during the week i was thinking to myself like if i think back to the years ago when i started mucking around with synthesizers the stuff that i know now because i played with modular synths if i knew that back when i was playing with synthesizers 20 Mm. years 25 30 years ago it would be a different world for me from what i you know because i was in those days Mm. i was kind of just stumbling through those terrible screens where you had menu diving <laughs> yes. and you were trying to get things to work and yeah. you were just getting MIDI to work or you were just trying to get that patch running not, on. You know what I mean? You're not like, getting much of an insight into the internal workings, are you, of music? Right. It's the and, insight and, and pitch that you get. And yeah. Timbre and, yeah and it's you. exactly it. Yeah. So there's guys that yeah, have I mean, been yeah. through that journey. So they went through that journey in the 70s and the 80s mm-hmm. and then they went to digital and they... They probably they were probably like, "Hooray! We don't have to touch this crap anymore. It's like a pain in the ass." Um, and you know, and there's guys like me who didn't really touch that stuff. Even though I was around in the seventies and eighties, I didn't really touch that stuff. I was sort of, I sort of started in the digital revolution from a DX7 point mm-hmm. of view, and then I went that way, and I went backwards. <laughs> My simple well, knowledge went backwards. Well, just you know, this scenario it. It's kind of it's humbling on one level, but it, it, you think you understand. You're like, yeah, yeah, I got it. And then you're like, no, I don't. No, something's wrong. <laughs> you know, I like, yep. and you, you know. But then you get online and you see people racking their, you know, they're like, well, this didn't work. Mm, you know, yeah, it is. Sometimes you're going, yeah. I know why it didn't work. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking at a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. a 2020 yeah. post on Reddit. And you're like, no, no. I'm, that wouldn't work. And then other times you're like, that was a good question. No replies. And you're like, oh, yes. that was my question. Yeah, see, see, David, that's a level up yeah. moment. When you had that, you've leveled up. <laughs> oh, yeah. You've leveled up. <laughs> yeah, but I, uh, I tried, when I see those, I do try to chuck in a little comment when I think, oh, no. Yeah. No, I have to put something in. I no one said anything. I hate going to the internet and asking a question and finding <laughs> no one's answer it. I'm not going to be one of those persons that contributes to this problem. But of course, you know, you can't always you don't have infinite amount of time and <laughs> sometimes yeah, you stop being poor research. person is sat there going, Nobody's answering me. Well, I just need this simple no, yeah, question yeah, answered. Exactly. Nobody's answering And the me. other the other the other problem I've had, um I had a conversation one way conversation with someone who used a piece of software that I wrote 
eons ago and he was trying to get it to work again and I knew how to get it to work but I couldn't contact him back because he used a messaging service on SoundCloud <laughs> which allows you to send message to the person you're listening to but unless you subscribe to that person the person can't reply back and I know this person <laughs> had a problem that I was going to be able to easily solve <laughs> and I had no way of contacting this person and that was that was frustrating yeah mm. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you just can't help people. <laughs> Got to accept that. I think you know. I think Facebook oh, uh, might be might be dead. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I, I'm kind of starting to started to believe that. Like, you've got those forums like Mod Wiggler and um, yeah. Gear Space, and yep. they they will probably outlive Facebook because they were around before Facebook. And they're gonna, and because Facebook is kind of, I feel like it's it's on its way out, or or Meta, the company that owns it, he's yeah. probably Again, changing it so be, dramatically because it's because it's something that's really created by someone else, as opposed to things yeah. like Gearspace and and Modweekler, which are essentially community created. Yeah. yeah, they didn't really. I mean, like very simply, there was people involved in the beginning of setting it all up, but since then there hasn't been a lot of ongoing development. Which I mean, that's the thing about social media these days is mm. it's so curated and controlled and well i've always been a bit i've always been a bit uh shy is it the word is that the word uh or precautious might be the better word of actually sort of mm -hmm. going you know all into setting up a, a great synth community on facebook uh like for example like what robbie's done with pro synth network that's mm. that's yeah. that's booming it's doing really really well but i was always reluctant to do that because i've always thought I don't have control of this baby. This is not owned by me. It's owned by some yeah, yeah. multinational company that they can tell me tomorrow that I I no longer can have access to this. I'm I'm banned mm -hmm. from it. Whereas if I've got my own yeah. forum on my own website like those Gearspace guys do or Mod Wiggler. Yeah. Um which by the way, Mod Wiggler were bought recently in the last couple yeah. of days by yeah. someone. Which is good so news. Yeah. Which is good news, yeah. by the way. Not bad news. No, good. Uh, yeah, it sounded yeah. like it was. Yeah, yeah. it's done the right way. Okay. Yeah, because someone yeah. needs to someone needs to finance it, and they they are willing okay. to do that. Yeah. So that's yeah. Some something and there are these platforms do need a minimum amount of cura you know funding and curation. Yeah. And, you know, but at least development. At least with them, right? Don't so need to be to the nth degree, like the Facebook. guy that created it, he he died, right? And you know, yeah, yeah. Rest, may he rest in peace and everything. But the guy, it was his little baby, and then when he died, mm. everyone's like, "Holy crap! This whole thing could literally shut down tomorrow. Yeah. What do we do?" Yeah. And there were some people that kept it sort of going on, on some kindling and a small flame, <laughs> until really they needed someone to take it over, which just happened. But. Yeah. That that's kind of the feeling that I I I was kind of getting about with you know these big multinational companies controlling oh, yeah. what content you're allowed to put in, yeah. dictating to you who who reads your messages. Like like for example, I don't know the ProSynth Network Facebook group's got about two thousand members in it, right? Mm. But if you were to put a, a message in there, not all of those two thousand people get it. No. Because Facebook want you to pay I mean, the money to advertise. They want that's how they that's it, how they're making money. Mm. It's just really irritating when you see a really interesting post that you're going to comment back to, and it just suddenly disappears. Yeah. How often does that happen? <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's yeah. just crap. It's terrible. Which whereas if I went into like Gearspace, which is an old uh, V Bulletin mm. type forum software, right? And I don't know how that thing hasn't been hacked yet. Anyway. <laughs> Another topic. <laughs> another topic. It's written in PHP. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the if I go in there and I haven't been there for ages, the site will show me all the posts that I haven't read. Yeah. I literally won't miss one thing, unless I tell it, you know, and you know, read it at market as read or something like that. But if I can sit there and I want to go, I haven't been there for about a couple of months. I'll go and read all the posts that I want to mm. read. And sometimes I'm like, holy shit, there was some cool stuff in here, and I, you know. I enjoyed mm. it. I can't really do that on Facebook anymore. No, no, it's very because they're not giving you, it. isn't it? Yeah, it's all very real time. You know, everything's about you know last forty eight hour news cycle. I definitely can see girls doing stupid dances 
Um, <laughs> and there are yeah. plenty of suggestions. Yeah. How, how to how to what's the what's the latest uh, one? Instagram. How, how to same. how to do this side hustle? What's this? What's this about side? I keep um, getting these side I've hustle things. This. Oh my god! Stop telling me about side hustles. It's like it, they're all BS anyway. There's, if anyone ever bites no- into that, just. They Rams never give warning. you a button They're to BS. say, I'm not interested in this. <laughs> yeah. There's a button, <laughs> not interested in the guy. That's no use to us. We want to know what you're interested in. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, that doesn't work that way in real life. Me deep I did, in the advertising world. I did that once with a with a website, with Grizz talking about hosting and stuff like that, oh, yeah. where um, I this guy came up to me and he goes, this whole thing's going to get shut down. What do we do? And I said, I'll, I'll, it's all on Linux. I'll just literally create an image of this whole operating mm. system and put it into a VM. Um, and uh, it literally was just that easy. And then I just uploaded it into the virtual machine and changed a few things on the network settings and bang, she was up and running again. That was that. It was that easy. That's the cool thing about those, you know, Linux based. Yeah, the, the ones that aren't dependent on so many new technologies. Yeah. I mean, because, yeah, the amount of dependencies on on technology that's involved in social media that we use now is staggering. It's easy to break things. Move fast and break things. Well, pretty much mainly the breaking things and not moving so far. <laughs> Mez in the chat goes, the side hustle assumes your main hustle is already successful. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't like the word hustle because it, it always comes yeah, across no, to me like yeah, it's a dodge, you're doing duplicitous. something dodgy. Yeah. Yeah, duplicitous. It sounds like, well, oh, you're trying, you know, it's like saying all businesses is trying to fool people out of their money. It's like, what was that? What was that's that? That's not what I'm trying to was do. Was it The Minder? Ian, was that show that was, he, he was a hustler, wasn't he? The Minder. Uh, yes. Minder was a hustler. That's where that term yes. came from, yes. I reckon. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised yeah. if yeah, that's yeah. where it came from. And there was a show yeah. called The Hustle as well. Yeah. Later. Yeah, later one. Um, I think it might have been about. some of the same actors yeah, in called, it. The Americans call it grifting as well. That's right. Which is basically it's con. So what confidence bands? My side hustle is Mm. is making music. That's my side hustle. I don't make money from it, but it's a hustle because the way I see it is, you know, if you're looking at their definition of a of what a side hustle is, that's probably what mine is. Being on YouTube and making music. It's but it's not making me millions of dollars. That's for sure. Mm. It's not making me five dollars either. Um. Yeah, if see, you want to, see, if you want Babs to is on it. The, Babs is on it. She's saying half of her Facebook feed is now sponsored posts. Yeah. It, it, it used to be you'd yeah. get you'd get five or six posts and then you'd get a sponsored one. Now it's the opposite. Yeah. Now you get five or yeah. six sponsored it's, posts and then you get it's a, hard <laughs> to find. Yeah, it's hard to find the latest posts of PSN. Yeah, it's like oh, it's advert, advert. Yeah, it's it's tricky. Well, that's Unless why you're on in every day. That's what they're trying to do: get you on every day, so that you know if if we make it so difficult to use. If you don't come to it, yes, Discord is great. I do like the Discord. It's pretty much the really got, I mean, of, of a yeah, board. I've, I've not really got into Discord, if I'm honest. I mean, I, you know. If I was to describe it's Discord, Discord it's like, do you remember IRC? It's, Discord reminds yeah. me of yeah, IRC. Yeah, yeah, I do remember IRC. Right, yeah. So if you, if you were quite comfortable using IRC back in the day, you would be okay using Discord. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, but I've not you, been in, creates, but I just... I, so go ahead. I was going to say, oh yeah, it creates some really cool little micro communities, um, you know, or maybe there's only you know, 10, 20 people using it, but um, you get to really know them well, and it's it's you get questions answered, and I really like it. I really like it. The problem is there's just mm. so many that you yeah. really have to. That's uh, yeah. That's yeah. I I've you I sort of go, about towards, you go in and out of two service. service. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit unmanageable. But but I, I've made some good. The, yeah. Sorry, you gave it. Yeah, it's a. It's definitely a better way to um, kind of communicate. But like everything mm. else, you don't know if it's going to last or, mm. you know, it's very frustrating now. It's really hard to know. Uh, you know, yeah. when these platforms kind of become a problem, like you lose lose people so you got to kind of so discord's been kind of i've noticed people that left twitter um mm. and they're starting yeah. their own or labels are starting their own or i like them yeah. so. 
I think Twitter's kind of going to be an interesting one because I think he's Elon's turning it into a bit more of an advertising sort of marketplace thing again. And so it's probably going to end up a bit like Facebook is now. It's going to be all it's going to be all rubbish with commercial crap. Whereas before it didn't oh, used to be. It? No, it was great. Oh, it didn't used to be rubbish. Well, there's always rubbish stuff on there, but it wasn't <laughs> rubbish like with you know like what, what Babs was saying before about Facebook how you scroll and you've got sponsored sponsor 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 and it's yeah. just like where is something that I actually want to read from my feed it takes you a bit to get to yeah so Twitter's becoming it, like it that might now. change the name again anyway you might so do. We haven't got a kind of oh, yeah. what it's called true yeah yeah I mean Changing I have been using blue sky ridiculous. blue sky which is the, the yeah I use Twitter. that yeah yeah um, that's yeah. hard though I, I mean that's the fork right yeah that's the way I see it that's okay. the, it's the fork in the road so they, they've gone Blue Sky's gone that way yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Elon's gone okay I've bought it now it's <laughs> called X and you're yeah. going to now pay me money um, mm. I, I, I don't know it just kind of it doesn't feel right like I kind of feel like I'm I'm probably not that okay with it, this either but I kind of feel like Google have a better model where they're just kind of subtly getting paid from people getting all the marketing mm. info from you using their platform. Yeah. It's a, it's probably not yeah, ethically then. good either, but I kind of feel <laughs> then, like that's a better yes. way of going about it. It's not so in your face with a big slap of the cold yeah. fish going, here's another ad, bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> Google claim not to be evil, but you know who knows? They do so much in secret and you just don't really know. Sometimes I suspect they don't know what they're doing. It's like, what did the algorithm do today? I don't know. I, yeah. I've been. We just let it loose on the world. I've, and see what I've paid for um, what do you call it? The YouTube um, oh not, premium. Uh, premium premium. That's it. Yeah, YouTube YouTube premium. So um, so far it's been good. The only thing, the only gripe I've got about it, and I feel like that was a bit of a trick. They tell you on the advertising, hey, by the way, you're going to be able to download your videos. And I'm like, oh, cool, awesome. So I go in there and I find out that you can't actually download your videos. What it does is it downloads this kind of weird codec stuff and it, and it sort of flags it offline for you somewhere um, in your cache that you can actually watch. But you actually don't actually get a, a video file so, as such right. that you can save yeah. somewhere. It's, it's more digital yeah. rights management. Yeah. It's a DRM certificate and the other, you've downloaded the it. other problem the other problem with premium is um which i like it too because of the ads it's way better but when you go into like just scroll and search somehow it's still trying to suggest and pump stuff through that algorithm mm. you know um when you're just searching for new things you know so you know i'm constantly going in there and saying not interested not interested don't recommend channel. Don't recommend channel. You know what Don't that algorithm's channel. like? I reckon if that algorithm was a friend, it'd be the most annoying friend that you... You know, if you've got one of those friends yeah. that are really yeah, annoying. Yeah. What that's is? the Yeah, yeah. Can you just shut up for a minute? Like, it'd be one of those <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, but it's also awesome. So, you know. So what are you going to do? We talked about Adblock the other day, oh, yeah, guys. But it's good. YouTube's oh. nice because it oh, doesn't Chris do it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the, the, okay, so ad block, right? So you, you, you can get all these different ad blockers, and some of them are pretty good. But YouTube are getting, so Google, are getting pretty quick at locking them down. And so they'll yeah. send you, what will happen is they'll work out, oh, you've got an ad blocker app on your browser. <clears throat> they'll send you a warning. They'll send you a second warning. And on the third one, they'll say, um, you can't watch this video now because you've got yeah. it. unless you t un disable your ad blocker we're not going to let you watch the video and the only way around it is to get a different ad blocker that the algorithm yeah. hasn't picked yeah. up yet which is kind of like you know cart before the horse ra regime right which which it's, one's going to win <laughs> it's the classic you know arms race there, yeah. there are a few um front runner ad blocker i would call them apps which are always on that cycle so you don't really notice it's happening but you basically get it oh it's not working the ads have come back and then it updates and it's like fixed again you're going hmm, yeah okay. that's part of the arms race right there another yeah. week where Cheers, someone's yeah. mentioned Rafa Max mentioned Rafa in the chat he's getting a bit of airtime. this Rafa guy 
Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, if, if Facebook keeps going the way it is, he's going to have a very, very sad life after he realizes that Facebook is, you know, like basically nowhere. It's going to crash and burn. And he's got his 400 different synth <laughs> Facebook groups. groups that he posts. <laughs> posts the same post in 400 oh, different yes. synth groups. Okay, that guy, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Because he have you seen he's got about four hundred different nicknames, right? Nicknames. Yeah. I don't know how he does it. He must have crazy. some. He must have a different computer set up, yeah. and he sits there and logs in. He's got. Well, he's Sa- presumably- Safa Rays, Rafa Says. <laughs> There's all these different names. It's like, <sighs> it's crazy. Yeah. That's usually having that many synonyms or pseudonyms um, in the social media world is usually reserved for you know Russian hackers things like that so i wonder maybe he is i don't know is he not is he not a bot <laughs> yes could be a bot yeah. it's all those jokes have been going around synth memes go look at that <laughs> facebook group um yeah. yeah i need to have a chat to jim and tell him jim you need to get that group off of facebook and put it into a real forum somewhere and host mm. it somewhere because it so it will you own uh, you <clears throat> own it it's not you know yes. it's, it's not someone else's data that you can't touch mm. One day memes will take over the world. <laughs> well, they, I mean, that's the thing. Like, what what if, say, Robbie and uh, and Ben and uh, whoever else is running the show over at Procyon, what if they said, mm. okay, I want to get a copy of all the posts and all the replies yeah. and all the videos and all the messages and everything. I want to get it. I want to download that. Yeah. And I want to archive it. Yeah. Well, I guess yeah. you can. I guess there's probably a way you can, right? But, but will you forever? I mean, I've will tried. there be at some point where they go, oh, yeah, no, no, we have, we, we did have a system purge and we did purge, um, you know, posts yeah. from 14 years ago. Um, you got a problem with that? <laughs> some people might go, I don't care, you know. We, exactly, we, yeah. We well, only care yeah. about what's happening in the last... They Seven may already days. be doing it. I mean, how far do you... You never how, can until you actually need it. Is it practical yeah. to go look? That's, that's true. That's it, Darren. You, you only care about what's on your hard drive until it crashes and you can't get it anymore. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Which keeps reminding me I need to get another hard drive just to back up this one. <laughs> Yeah. I got a few. I got, I got a few what, Western Digital passports floating around in various different places, not necessarily all on the same physical site too. Uh, I, I use a no, NAS office, you know. Uh, right, yeah. Think about think about a NAS system, because Darren, because then you can mm. back it up to two separate hard drives, and it just duplicates both. So if one of the drives goes down, you've still got backup. Mm. That's good for I, physical I always thought issues, about that. but not for theft yeah. or um, hack, well, you um, can viruses. You can, I mean, I, it's Just interesting. I've never bothered to. You can you can dial into it, I think, or you know, off the internet if you wanted to. But mine mine was just isolated. So you you can uh, download your own personal Facebook data. I do remember there an option mm, in yeah, your profile I to do like that, that. Yeah. but I don't think you can do. I don't think you can do groups or pages no, or something it's like that. Not your personal, yeah, exactly. But I might be wrong. But I, I have the admin, the group administrators could. Who owns the? Ch- Ooh, that's interesting. I mean, if I could be bothered, I'd go and look now. But I'm not. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll leave it. For them. <laughs> give give them homework to do. You know. <laughs> but what I guess what this kind of this whole discussion that we're mm. talking about with social media and all these big platforms is, I guess. Really, we should probably be careful about where we pop our music, eh? Um, because we might be already under some sort of agreement where it's yeah. in, if you've logged in and used yeah. this platform, you yeah, now yeah, yeah. have given us rights to use yeah. your music if you've I uploaded mean, it. Wasn't there something about SoundCloud with that? If I remember, I mean, I'd, there was I an issue with SoundCloud. Account with SoundCloud. Mm. Yeah, and I stopped using SoundCloud. Yeah, um, and there was, I think there was going... some sort of problem with that. I mean, it doesn't matter for me because no one will care. But if you're, you know, a big selling artist, it might matter. Um, Because I I remember there was a story where uh, I think, uh, was it Miley Cyrus was telling Taylor Swift to go re-record all those songs that you don't own the masters for? Yeah. And she's been doing that. And she's been doing that. And she re-recorded a whole album 
Yes. Um, yeah. And the album is actually selling better than the original one did. Yeah. And she gets all the yeah. royalties for it because she owns yeah. the master. And that's Smart. really about um, about licensing as much as anything. Yeah. Because she, you know, if 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 they wanted, she didn't own the masters. They could license it to a film or a TV show, and yep. she had no yeah. choice. Whereas by re-recording them and actually doing them as, as I mean, they are they're pretty close, you know. Because I've I've you know, I've listened to a. I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. Well, she so owns the rights to the everyone. music, so she can record it exactly yeah. the same as she yeah. wants to. Yeah. She wouldn't be. She wouldn't have the rights to be able to stop them putting that on a TV show or a film, yeah, yeah or an yeah. advert for that matter. Mm. Whereas now she has, you know. Well, okay. they still have the right to put the old one, but they don't yeah, have the right have, to put the yeah. new one. To put the new one, up, yeah. yeah. And if she does it, yeah. for example, say, say she does it and she goes, "Hey guys, I've re-recorded this. We used a better studio. We used a yeah. higher." recording that's, uh quality it's been it's been digitally that's, mastered that use all I those tech terms sort of how how it went didn't it yeah it, yeah she basically yeah, basically yeah and she, she got I mean, more support first from fans than she had before she, yeah. she put extra tracks she, on as well tracks yeah. that she'd originally recorded then re-recorded them as well and added so it's you do, a new tracks you don't just get a red album yeah you get the red album plus a lot of extra tracks which is great i think it's quite smart and i think miley cyrus was yeah, yeah. big behind telling her that, that you should do mm -hmm. it because i think she probably had the same situation and her dad yeah. probably warned her about it um, you know Billy Ray probably I mean, wonder about it. I th I think Taylor Swift. I think she's a good songwriter, but I also think she's quite a smart lady because, you know, the film that she put out, the concert film. Yeah, that was no, that was genius. No, made, no major distributor <laughs> yeah, wanted to take that. Yeah. So she she organised it herself and yeah. made millions just off that, that was genius. Because it became such that a packed out thing. cinemas. Good yeah. on her. That yeah. packed out good cinemas. On, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I didn't. Because she knew. See it. I haven't seen it yet. Well, she knew that. Like, let's say, it's pretty easy to work out, right? It's just maths. I'm going to go do a world tour. We're going to visit all of these different cities, and each one of these concerts are going to. We're going to be able to get. Yeah. I don't know, sixty thousand people at a concert, mm -hmm. right? So if I've got five concerts in that city, that's five times sixty thousand. You know, you do the maths and add up all the numbers, and then you go, okay, yeah, yeah. out of that, I'm probably only getting in front of about one and a half million people by the time exactly. I've toured. Mm. Okay, there's there's so many <coughs> billions of people that would like to see my, my music mm. and my concert. So let's mm. just move, do a movie. It's, it was genius. I thought it was really, yeah, really clever. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yet to see it. You might not really like, like, you might not like Tyler Swift's music, right? Um, I've got a teenage daughter, so I, I'm unfortunately I have to listen to it. <laughs> but some of the music's <laughs> actually pretty good. Some I'm, of it's pretty good. I'm, I have described myself as a oldest fan. I may well be, but my 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 future daughter-in-law thinks I'm not the oldest fan. <laughs> she's a bit. She's a bit like if you were to compare her to other artists, like oh, still um, pop music. So, well, What's I don't know. Music? I mean, I don't like all of the stuff. But there's some of the albums like Billie I'm Eilish. Not you know, she yeah. she came from a more sort of poorer background, whereas mm. Taylor, she had a Lord. she had a fairly decent wealth in her family already. Yeah, she did. Mm. And her, and her parents paid yeah. for a lot of stuff at the start, so she had a leg in in that sense. She did. Yeah. Uh, and whereas, like I said, not all the stuff is great. Whereas but, Billy didn't. She know, had a it? she had her brother mm. help her get. Yeah, it wasn't nice. really. It was just pure luck in mm. a way. I mean, they're talented, so talent got you there. But That's right. that their situation was more pure luck. Um, that someone listened to it and said, "Hey, this stuff is good. Mm. We're going to take this further." I'd like, like to. I'd like to see her develop more. It's a bit. It's you know. It's. I want to hear something different from Billie Eilish. Really, I love the. I love yeah, that first she, album. Yeah, she's. She it's is great. a bit. She is a bit same same, isn't she? It's like. Oh, yeah, I want to hear something different. Really. Softly spoken. Close I kind of feel. I kind of yeah. feel like. She's 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 been careful though. I kind of feel like yeah. because she's still quite young. She, she's only mm. in her early 20s. Yeah, it's, that's the thing, isn't yeah. it? You forget um, how prolific these people oh, are. Ma get how young Madonna's, you about, uh, Madonna Australian sounded queen. quite similar for the first couple of albums. Mm. Remember Madonna yeah. when she was in the early days? So yeah. it, it will take a while, I reckon, before she finds her groove. She, she has, to, she has to mature as a person as well, don't forget. Yeah. That's yeah, the, and mature as a songwriter. I mean, mm. I don't... Yeah. I didn't... What I've heard from her aren't... 
classic songwriting. It's no. more uh, something some else. Are, some of them are clever. It's it's interesting. Mm, lyrically it's interesting. clever. I don't. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not um, not what Taylor's doing for sure. Um, yeah. Taylor's Taylor's way ahead of her as far as a songwriter. There's a big difference what yeah. they're doing. Um, some of Taylor's stuff is quite. Is, is is good. It's very good. It's she knows the chorus and she knows um, she understands how to craft a real song, mm. and, and that's probably yeah. the Nashville thing. But but yeah, what when I hear even when my daughter like she's a she's a Swifty and she's like eleven, twelve, but we put on Billie Eilish and she just kind of so, she doesn't <laughs> react to it at all because it okay. feels more cool. Mm. I, I get a cool vibe yeah, with yeah, her. Like it's edgy. She's it's very focused kind of on, um, yeah, trying trying yeah. to be edgy, which yeah. is a very smart thing to do at that age group, right? Yes. Um, do you, Do you guys that are not from the UK cool, know about Fine. self esteem? Yeah. Have you heard What's of self esteem? No. Have you guys in in Australia and the US heard of self esteem? As in a band? I no. No, no. So, so, so it's a female singer. No. No. She's from Sheffield. No. All right. No. She's great. She, you know, okay. I mean, she's, 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 over the last they're all, they're two all, or three years, yeah. she, she, she's sort of There's, blown up quite big here. Really good <laughs> album. Well, the guys we are trying like, to call themselves Swifties now. <laughs> well, the, um, <laughs> well you, you know, it's funny. You really, um, it's been a nice way to bond with my daughter. So we'll go pick up mm. pizza or something yeah. and we we put on the songs and, yeah. yep. and I did the, same the last thing I'm going to do is <laughs> is critique them you know but some of them you just listen to and you go that is solid songwriting yeah there's just no way you, you can't you just, there's no you can't flaw critique it. It. Yeah. no flaw yeah. you know and a good, a, a stylistically good she moves yeah. they're good, good pop, pop writers songs good pop, she's yeah. good yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's they're all capable of it they're all you know I've caught her I'm doing. Just, I've, I've caught her doing the Annie yeah. Lennox thing though, which I thought, ah, yes, I've got. Yeah, I know you. I know you're getting some of your ideas from the greats, uh, and because she's she's a bit of a vocalist, yeah. and I thought, yeah. are you using all these backing vocalists with all your tracks? And no, she's doing her own backing vocals, in, and she I, does a really, really clever, clever way, which yeah. Annie Lennox was well known for, right? Okay. Um, and 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 when Annie did it, she she did it blatantly, obviously. You knew that it was her. Yeah, backing yeah, her own was, tracks, yeah, and it was, and it, it was, yeah, yeah. it became part yeah, of that art ethos. of the Eurythmics, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. But I noticed Taylor's well, Annie's doing it. voice. Yeah, Annie's voice is that's. There's no competition. Yeah. Taylor's voice is yeah. is nice, you know, and she can do some things with it, but it's not compelling. I guess is the word yeah, I like to use a lot. It's not. You know, it's, it's not funny, um, quite. It's just. Unique, yeah. I, I mean, it's I, okay. I was a It's must. not edgy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was a massive well, choice. It's not which deep. I mean, it's. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really consider Annie Len Lennox um, edgy. I just think it was complex. Yeah. It was like the best mm. synthesizer. Yeah. I love you. I love you, Rhythm. But I didn't. <laughs> the I didn't like mm. Annie, Len Annie Lennox's solo album at all. Never really uh, gelled okay. with it. But I love the I love the Rhythmix thing. Yeah, I think yeah. she needed Dave I Stewart. She needed a, a foil. <laughs> Really. Yeah, I'm. Like, I know. Right? I know what you mean. You know, I've got the same f feeling about some <coughs> other singers who are fronting electronic bands that do often do solo things. Mm. Um, and I'm not it's really hard. liking their solo yeah. stuff nearly as much because it doesn't counterpoint yeah. with the synths yeah. in the same way. So, well, yeah, it's that band dynamic, right? That check and balance. Mm. Like it is. Oh, yeah, no. it's it's yeah. fun. Lennon and it's McCartney, cool. yeah. you know. Well, even uh, yeah. oh, Vince, you know, Yazoo, maybe Harrison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I think uh, what's it, Alison? Uh, what's Moye. her name? Alison Moye. Alison Moye. Alison Moye. Moye. Yeah. I mean, they admitted that at the time they didn't get on at all. No. They hardly spoke to each other. <laughs> no. uh, classic, um, yes. You know, but which is probably which is probably Eric, the opposite. Great album. That's the opposite to Annie and and Dave because they got along. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, they they started as wasn't it? They started as yeah, a, yeah. in a relationship and they broke up over in a plane trip to Australia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun fact. See, that's what that's what got, <laughs> that's what a plane trip to Australia will do to you. Yeah, oh, I know. They landed in Australia trip. and they were not. They yeah, were not. Yeah. Yeah. So they landed it was interesting that when they, they, when they were boyfriend in, and girlfriend, that's when their music. Yeah, when they were in the tourists, they actually weren't the main songwriters. 
you know. Uh, yeah. And there were some really, really good songs in the tourists. You know, I think they did three albums. I've got them all somewhere on vinyl. I think. I like that um, that touch album. I really like that touch album because it's Just really because yeah. it's it's yeah. it's not. What would you say? It's not really that real mainstream poppy sort of stuff that they did around it. So the album after and the album before kind of mm. oh, the album before was awesome though. It had sweet dreams and stuff on it, but mm. um, that touch album was so good. It was just it was kind mm. of very alternative in a way. And I like and I think Dave Stewart. I reckon if you ever asked him, I reckon that would be one of his favourites. I reckon if you asked yeah, him, I, I was very fond of Savage, the album Savage as well. Yeah, Savage is good too. Yeah, um, different though, right? Yeah, it was, was that the one with yeah. sex crimes yeah. on it. No, that was uh, 1984. No, 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 that, that was 1984. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Self-titled. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a good album, actually. That's a good album. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a good yeah. album. Yeah, dude, they were heavily yeah, criticised for that. They were. Oh, yeah, 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 it was controversial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but, it, but it, it was great. Really, really good album. Good fun. Yeah. I kind of feel like that. there's, there's that sort of music. It's kind of timeless, isn't it? Mm. When you think, I mean, it was a long time ago. Some of them, some of their stuff does sound very eighties, and you know, and that's probably yeah. because of the, the yeah. stigma around some of their famous tracks. But if you do listen to some of their their back tracks on their albums, they are timeless. Oh yeah, they don't have a date to them. Yes, they they defy pigeonholing or date <laughs> kind of date encoding. Mm. Their carbon dating doesn't work. Well, I kind of feel like if you were to yeah. if you were to re-release it today, it would probably mm. hit the charts. That's what I mean I'll by it. Yeah. It might be, maybe it might not be timeless in that sense, but it might be relevant today. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it'd probably commercially <laughs> oh, successful. Look at Kate Bosch. Being... Exactly, Darren. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that was. I remember say we were talking mm. about that sh that song running up the hill once with Brooksy yeah. on the show, right? And I said to, I think I said to you guys, I'm I'm not a massive fan of that song. Mm. Um, at the time, I I just wasn't. I remember it coming out at the time, and I just yeah, wasn't. Yeah. I a just lot of didn't stuff like that. I yeah. didn't like it as much as her. her I love Wuthering Heights. I love Babushka and all that sort of stuff, and I just wasn't a massive fan of it. But then yeah. it got <laughs> re-released, and I'm like, hang on a minute, this is actually pretty bloody good. Yeah. I kind of changed really my mind. Yeah, 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 totally, really totally good you album. Do that, you do song. stuff, and you just go, it, I hated that song. I hated that song when I was, and then you listen to it and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually really like. We're entitled song. to I change our minds. Where did that go? Exactly. Well, you see, that's when, subconscious. When I written that, when I written that remix, it. it just blown up, hadn't it? it, it I'd written the remix uh, <laughs> probably about eight or nine months before that suddenly blew out, and that's why I never got put out. So I just used it as a live, ah, uh, a yeah, live thing, so. and then put it out later. Cool. It was a, it's annoying because yeah, I thought so I'd put it out, and yeah, because you well, felt like it you felt it would have been kind of. Um, you know, cliche on Wouldn't, the bandwagon. Yeah, you know, I've written it well, before. Yeah, yeah. Just, there so were like, plenty no. of people bandwagoning. Yeah, I know. At the time I know. Too. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that, that's why I left it that's out for a year. And I thought I'll use it. I'll, I'll read. You know, I'll read double with it and use it as yeah. the uh, live set of Blackpool, and then uh, and then put it out on YouTube. You know, a few months later for people who liked it. Mm. But that was a complete one of those. Oh God! Just as I've <laughs> written what I wanted to write, it's. Uh, I'm not putting yes. that out now. Oh, there's no yes, way. So everyone's going to get the cello sound out on their fair light now, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get the same thing with, um, just a segue, you get the same thing with modular, module development ideas as well. <laughs> yes, it, you've it, got Rant it. Rant and, and, I, and, Rant and I are both lurking on modular grid every week, so to see what's out. And of course, every so often I'm looking at it going, and every, every so often my heart sinks and I go, oh shit, someone else has done it. <laughs> the idea it's like you get that kind of oh and then you look further into it and you go oh no it's not exactly exactly the same as what I was going to do. oh phew thank god <laughs> but every I so often there is one where you're just going okay that's done <laughs> that one <Yeah. laughs> uh, mm. a bit like Rachel, so the same uh, thing Rachel in music uh, well, it's the same Rachel. thing in music that's that's all I'm trying to say is it yeah I understand right. you're it's, talking of uh, yeah. sort of more newer female singers is it Rachel uh, Rachel R.K. Collier I don't oh, mind yeah. her. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I like, I like. I don't mind that that she does. I, uh, I've listened to. I don't her. know. I don't know how to handle her. To be fair, she's my boat really. Yeah, I'm probably the same as you, Ian. Yeah. I kind of yeah. feel like, uh, are you really about the music or are you about the personality on YouTube? 
I'm mm. kind of that's where I'm no. kind of going with her. Oh, yeah. yes. oh. Mm. Um, and you've not mentioned Kylie. Hey, it's only, last album, my wife's, really my wife's a big Kylie fan. She's a massive Kylie. I, fan. I, look, I did like when Kylie went indie rock. She, she did. Uh, oh, when she. Yeah, so when she I got really like it. passionately. So Ian, when she know. when she got rid of Stock Ake and Waterman, right? And she and she went <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh I think she did this album called Breathe or The Impossible Princess or something. I can't remember what it was called, but it had two really big hits from her. And she recorded it in England. She'd already moved over there yeah, at that yeah. stage. And they were her that was that was truly her. She wrote yeah. the songs, she got she uh, got the session around. musicians in. No, no, this way before then. No, yeah, way before okay. then. Yeah, that, that was like around the Sydney Olympics, that one. Uh, this was this was 90s. Um, okay. So she sacked mm-hmm. Stock 8 and, um, and she wrote Breathe and, uh, and yeah, I think it's the, Cowboy Style it's, yeah. or something like that. Um, the Breathe, that album with Breathe on, she, yeah. who's the producer? She used some dance guys and that's really, I've, I've got that it's album. A really good synthy yeah. album, yep. Um, I'm just looking for it now. Um, samples geez. on there synths you, you'd pick all the geez. different synth sounds too they're all like uh, really? all that sort of 90s confide, you know, confide, confide in, in, me. in me that's it yeah confide yep. in that's me that's a great track yeah, yeah. 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 and it was and it was kind yeah. of um, it, that it was kind album, of actually. really different to what she mm. did before because everyone yeah, was, was you know yeah. all that yeah. stock eight and water yeah. and stuff yeah <laughs> but after that that was that. that's really what launched her I think yeah. was that album yeah yeah, not the stuff, yeah, not the yeah. crappy locomotion and all that shit no, she, that she did before. She, she really yeah. developed complexity from yeah. that point onwards. She was, yeah. she was always, she always owned. She still is. Her, <laughs> yes, she's very, she's a very intelligent girl. She, she's, she's yes. always owned musically the stuff that she's done. Even That's when right, she was yeah. a st- on Neighbours as a as an actress, mm-hmm. she did a heap yeah. of music stuff behind the scenes at that time. Even even before she did and locomotion hard work and, and she yeah. was really hard work. It, it yeah. didn't it, it didn't hinder her that she was going out with Michael Hutchins at the time either, because that was yeah, <laughs> that relationship was uh, you know the furry handcuffs and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think she's had there, any. I don't think she's had any kids though, has she? I don't think she has. I don't think so. I'm not aware. I don't no, think she's childbed. Uh, a sister has. Oh, Danny mm. has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, she's she's a completely different character. That girl. <laughs> I've met her. <laughs> okay. All right. She's lovely and everything, but different. Completely different. She's to not Kylie. Kylie. She's not Kylie, <laughs> and she knows it. And she knows she's in the shadow yeah, yeah. of her yeah, sister. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think she can deal with it. Um. Mm. But yeah, some kind of bliss, ma- a man with beard. That's a great song. Yeah, some kind some of bliss. Kind of bliss. Great and have you? Song. I saw her play live probably about a year or two before COVID hit. They came to the oh, city okay. Perth. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it was the... South South Perth for sure. Mm. Yes. And they that some kind of bliss was one of the live tracks that she played at that and that was one of the ones I remember the most because she mm. did it perfectly and it really mm. just resonated with the crowd it was one of those live songs that yeah that's mm. what I, I think sometimes when we look at our music I think to myself like like how Darren's doing live stuff I think to myself what would my tracks sound like live like mm. maybe they won't sound good live I don't know it's kind of weird we need a Perth emo. Well, you know, I've had yeah. to change mine anyway. Yeah. yeah. My, if you do a Perth emo, uh, we'll come. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, think, oh, I, I absolutely yeah, believe that. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's that's you know, if you're not asking, if you're not getting that sort of oh, this would work, I think this would, this change would work really well live. You probably haven't arrived at the point where you can really tell yet. Well, I don't want well, to. I don't want to. I don't want to end up being stuff. like um, Jamie. You know, because I love Jamie; he's a great guy and everything. But he busts a gut every month or whatever it is yeah, to do yeah. his, oh, his back to do his mum. Yeah. I don't yeah, want to yeah. be. I don't want to end up holding that baby like that. There's no way. No, I mean, I, I am going to look when we get to Froome. I am going to yeah, look at doing any mum if I can. Mm. But I don't. I can't do what Jamie does. Mm. I just can't do that. No. So there no. needs to be a PA. Like, there needs to be somebody like running herding around. cats. Yeah. Well, it's like yeah. I was talking. I was talking yeah. to like, mm. um, you know you talk to heaps of people about those sort of things and you think mm. if one person does it once you don't want to end up being that same person doing it every single time so 
I'm happy to yeah. do one, but then someone else can yeah, yeah. take yeah. it on the next time. You need to, yeah, you need a team of people to help, really. Yeah. Two or three of you, ideally. Because it's not... And some of the EMOMs... Do, running an EMOM is not just getting a whole bunch of people together and, and playing live. No. You've got to organise the venue. You've got to get, like, gear in. It just, it's, not, it's not as simple as it's, you think it is. No. Yeah, yeah, and and also the emoms. Yeah, I always keep saying I, I needed to find an emom that's easy for everyone to get to, and parking's easy because you've got parking the in there. And parking. That's the worst parking. thing for emoming. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah. This, if anything, like any, any if you can find somewhere general, decent parking, we can't do it in so the city of easier. Perth, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Bugger! Am, oh, am I right in thinking, Darren, that there is no parking at, uh, at the Blackpool Park? Parking in that city is atrocious. Oh. No, well, Blackpool no, Lemon is great. We'll do it uh, in Fremantle. That's much better. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's finished doing it. We'll uh, have to do it in Baldivis or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, Runa. Um, um, but but because uh, so uh, it's just too much for him. The parking was <laughs> so perfect. It was literally. I mean, I don't know. Cananara. About a twenty-yard walk from the car Cosmos. park, and there was another car park further down. So, <laughs> Malaga. But other other imams can be are like, it's well, where'd you park? It's like a, where'd you get there? How how do you, you know, yeah. get your kit? Especially with mine being quite heavy. Did I mean, someone the, yell at you? The down? Was... Come on, tell us, mate. Someone yelled at you. You can't park there. Is that, is that what someone said? <laughs> <laughs> the Yorkall was always all right. It wasn't a big car park, but it was always a car park. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's the places you can get though, isn't it? Because obviously, emons are, are, are getting bigger, but they're obviously you're not mm. you're not paying for the emons, so you've got to get the the places like to have you through mm. the week or Miz, Miz. you know when it's quiet yeah, yeah. times. So, I parked in the convention center on I, the weekend. I get that. I get that. Side, to see my bill, but um, yeah, <sighs> definitely need to get some don't dare park, to park in the city. I worked at the convention center years. last weekend. <laughs> you know, when I did that show on Saturday night, I yeah. spent I'd spent. Um, eight hours standing at an expo all day talking to people thousands of people mm, and I God. still did my show so there's commitment for you guys yes well done, still did it well done. Mm. Um, that's why my voice was really weird like I was saying mm -hmm. I can't talk I can't talk it's like yes. <laughs> I've, my, I've just run yeah, out I of understand. talking juice <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah hey we're gonna have to go we're finished it's ten past yeah. midnight here um, it is pumpkin time Maybe we could do the the emom at Mez's house. Hey. How, much park, how much parking near your house, mate? I don't know. Can't remember. <laughs> Twenty dollars. That's 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 a tenner, isn't it? Uh, so that's ten quid for parking. Ten ten quid for parking. No, I, I it cost me. You pay that in the uh, centre of York. <laughs> I think it was forty bucks a day to park where I parked. Wow. Yeah. So Which is twenty quid, quid a day. Yeah. I mean, in London, that's probably you know normal, but it's, it's a lot it's, of money. Oh, hey, like I said, I think I, I said on Kent's pub, it was four quid for a slice of toast in a in a cafe last weekend. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> Jeez, that is ridiculous. And then 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 another three oh, pounds for the uh, coffee it, as well. Did, was it, did you get did it have raisins? Did you get dry on toast. <laughs> I, I don't I don't like I don't oh, really? eat butter, so it was just dry toast. It was a slice <laughs> of dry toast. It was four quid. You know, you know where Trafalgar oh. Square is. You know Trafalgar yeah. Square is right. There's this, mm. like, it's got a weird road that sort of goes past a couple of really old sort of 1960s looking style shops, right? And then it spins and you spin around and you go around the back of it that way. Where yeah. those shops are, there's a cafe just tucked in there where everyone, obviously, probably everyone goes there because they're going to check out Trafalgar Square and they go and have a coffee yeah, yeah. or whatever. Mm. Mate, go there for breakfast. I s they are the best eggs you've had ever in the world in that cafe probably took me an hour and a half to get there I'm, I'm on the outskirts oh you're on the other side eh? <laughs> Damn. Yeah. At least they, the one thing I have learned is God knows what it they are eggs. insane yeah. eggs they were so I mean, good it, I, I, have to, I have to say getting across wow. London takes, just takes hours yeah you I know, know. You, have to, you have to tube yeah. everywhere don't you yeah. really it's like, I'm, my, I my could friend get down to London said, before said Ian gets across London yeah yeah you yeah uh, when I went, when I went to, I mean, Colin lives in the in the next area. It's it's, it's like a town, really, because I mean, yeah. Waltham's still massive. So. But so I thought, oh, I'll, I'll I'll walk. No, no, it took an hour. It would have taken an hour and a quarter to walk. It's I huge. went on the bus, and it's, it still yeah, took forty it's minutes on the bus, and that's yeah. just the next district. <laughs> it's massive. Yeah, yeah. 
But you know how big London is, the greater area of London, it's still smaller than our city in terms of kilometres. Is it really? Yep. Bloody hell. Our yeah, city, more our city goes. It. How many kilometers it's from Mandurah to Yanchep? It's uh, it's probably about a hundred k's, isn't it? Probably close to a hundred k. I don't know. Someone will tell us what it is. But our city goes from the, the town of Mandurah hmm. up to the town of Man- Yanchep, and that's the city limits, right? Which is yep. huge, and it's actually uh, around about the same size as Tokyo yeah. in terms of metropolitan wow. area size. Yeah. So do you have an underground popular subway system? Nope. Oh, there's only a couple of little no, underground bits in the city, but yes, it's very, very right. small. A bit of sub- so we did have a tunnel boring is, machine. What's, what's <laughs> the population? Public, public transport is buses. The, when they were all Two and a half mil. tunnel boring machines. Yeah. Two and a half million. It's only small. Mm. Spread in that air, it's big it's area. Small, yeah, because yeah, yeah, everyone... Like, mm. I, had a, I had a friend visit me from Italy, and he said, why is it that all of you have football fields in your front yard? I'm like, yeah. actually, we do, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> kind of do. We great. do. You could put a goal up. You could kick the ball. <laughs> it, like, seriously, we do. We all have massive, huge front yards with grass and backyards mm. are probably even bigger. <laughs> and that's why it's so sprawled, well, Darren. It is getting... You see, that's they, it. They're starting to disappear around the front gardens. I don't know if you've noticed around the There you go. Mez says it's 128 kilometres from north to south. Wow. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's how big it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And yeah, and you can get you can get from one side to the other before you can get five kilometers. You can. You can. I mm. mean the traffic. I mean I I have driven I've <laughs> driven a little bit in the car because but actually it is easier to get on the an underground or a bus. We don't know what I'm traffic's wondering. like here. No. We we complain about is. traffic here, but I've been told yeah, to yeah. shut up. You know? yes. I mean, it, when I went to Kent <laughs> the other day, because, yeah. right, Kent, Kent actually lives 30, 33 miles from where I am, right? It took me two hours to get to Kent across London. Yeah, because you got to go through the traffic. Mm. Yeah. 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 What about, about if you traffic, did it on a yeah. tube? Would it be quicker if you did it on a tube? It, um, or is it kind of not in that way? A little way? bit, actually, because it's... Cause, uh, I, actually, I could have gone overground to Kent, but then I'd have had a 20-minute walk to his house at the other end so it's things like that you know he's an yes, Essen, you can right get to the, mm. yeah yeah you can get there but then you yeah. you still got a fair of walks when you get there or a bus and you wouldn't want to be yeah. carrying anything no and yeah, i was always carrying a lyra lyra eight you don't want to carry anything either you probably get it <laughs> and the, and the, get it nicked yeah yeah <laughs> <On the> tube. <laughs> mm. hey what you got there mate <laughs> mm. give it yeah, to me yeah. Yeah. All right, boys. Lovely to have Dave. How's your world yeah, going? Lovely. Before yeah. we go, you go. What's good? Yeah. How's good. how's kitty? Cranking away. How's the kitty? The kitty's, the kitty's good. I don't know why she's not out. I'm very surprised. I'm very happy. Yes. <laughs> very out of <laughs> for the next for the next six months, yeah, Dave. No, you're gonna hug our you're kitties. gonna enjoy that we're we're an hour later for you guys now. So. Oh, I am me. enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoying it. Yeah, we. Yeah, we've got. We we, our clock. Our clocks change tomorrow. So what? What will that mean? That mean we're going to two. We'll be two two o'clock. Two o'clock. Are you going forward? Right. Yeah, Yeah. we're going forward an hour. Okay, we're going to stay. Chris and I will stay. We'll stay the same time. So So it'll be um. So it'll be two p.m. London time. Right. But I'll I'll advertise that on the on the channel. Yeah, but good. for for David, he's he's his has already changed. His clocks already changed. So he's yeah. Uh, I think you're changing where changing. you are you are you in LA, Dave? I forget where you are. No, I'm in I'm in the I'm kind of Midwest West. Midwest. So I'm a yeah. I'm an hour later than they are. Okay. In LA. Yeah. So, so you'd be seven. Any synthetic is seven a.m. Yeah. yeah. Still early, seven a.m. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's early, but yeah. that's actually yeah. that's a good time. It's it's uh, Andy uh, Synchrotron's his four a.m. Uh, yeah, that's uh, way too show. early. Yeah, I try. I look at the clock and I'm like, "Come on, you can do it." I'm like, "Yeah, I can't." Do it. Oh, mate, I went on ProSynth Network. It was two a.m. I was completely <laughs> oh. shattered the next day. Oh, no. I just can't do it. It's right in the middle when no. you're in your deep sleep. You know, that's when you're yeah, in your deep sleep. No. 
I'd probably oh, be alright because I'm a late. I'm a late. I did Sonic late, State a couple of times. That's not too bad. That's around midnight for late me. Awesome. Sonic State, so I can do that. Okay. Mm. Mm. Um, you know, I might like, finish at one a.m. or something. It's not too bad. I can do. Those it. are hard because that's like middle of the work day. You know, so you're. Like, it's a Wednesday, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it's just hard to watch them. Sometimes I get lucky if I'm just at the computer, but yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's fine. Have a happy Easter if that's what you do. Um, yeah. If, and yeah. if you don't, Easter, if you don't, just have a nice weekend. Um, yeah. Take advantage of chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself some some eggs or chocolates or whatever it is that you. Those little marshmallow peeps. Hot cross, hot <laughs> yeah. cross buns, I tell you. Hot cross Awful. buns. Hot cross buns. Hot yeah. cross buns. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, I prefer that. <laughs> we, we'll just what we'll do. What in my house is we'll go and we get a bad a bag of uh, those solid Cadbury the little ones. The little yeah. Fo- oh, yeah, covered yeah. in foil, and we go out the backyard. And we mm-hmm. just chuck yeah. them all over the lawn and the garden, and let the kids run around and find them. And hopefully, <laughs> they get them all before the ants get to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what the foil's for. <laughs> yeah, that, well, yeah. when it's the size of po- 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 uh, they have got a bit of a job on. It's yeah. it's a pretty decent. It's, like, different it's, these days, it's a th- it's thirty meters from one one fence to the other in our backyard. Oh wow! And mm-hmm. the front, yeah, the decent. front's. I think the back's a little bit thinner, actually. The front's 30, 30 something meters, and the back's a little bit thinner. It sort yeah. of it narrows back. But you could easily kick a soccer ball, you know, pretty hard yeah. across. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, nice to have you all. Um, yeah, and nice to have go. the chatties. We yeah, shall uh, next week, pleasure. Pleasure. We'll pleasure shoot it off. Always. Please press record. Please, please, please do it for yes. me. Press record. Yes, always. You guys are awesome. Right. See you later. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye.